Um, so welcome back. Uh, we, had a, we had a nice little lunch. Um, sorry you all couldn't be with us here in Belgrade to, uh, to enjoy that lunch. Uh, remember just a year ago, you, some of you were, and uh, it's good to see uh, some of your faces. So this afternoon, uh, we're going to start by uh, talking a little bit about EU and NATO cooperation and the implications for Western Balkans and Serbia. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty big uh, charge for us to do uh, this afternoon. Um, so let me introduce, take just a minute to introduce the uh, five um, great guests we have, uh, experienced and uh, very credible to talk about these, these uh, issues. Uh, first, uh, Pietro Mostardi, the uh, attache, the EU delegation uh, attache to Serbia. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, Jacqueline Dow, uh, the Pol Political Affairs and Security uh, Pol Policy Division at NATO. Uh, welcome. Hi, good afternoon. Rol Roland uh, Freudenstein, uh, Policy Director of the Wilford Martin Center in European Studies. Good to see you again. Welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, Professor Andrew Mikta from uh, the George C. Marshall Center. Uh, welcome from Gormish Pertenkirchen. And then finally, uh, Susan uh, Grusevich. Uh, it's good. hard to pronounce. Grubisic. 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 <laughs> yes. I should be much better right. at this, shouldn't I, at this point? Uh, I know you're in Belgrade, uh, but yes. we're still separated uh, safely. So safely, well, yes. welcome to all of you. I look forward to uh, the conversation. Again, it's a, it's a, broad, uh, it's a broad topic, uh, implications for, uh, we could cover a lot of things, integration for accession issues, for security cooperation, of course, Kosovo, Serbia uh, uh, relations. So let's, let's, why don't we start by each one of you taking the time, uh, about eight to 10 minutes, if you, if you don't mind, to make some opening comments and remarks. And then we'll see where that brings us in the conversation amongst ourselves. And we'll leave a little time to the, uh, for the audience uh, to ask questions to this, uh, to this capable uh, and experienced group. Uh, because I think that's important that we include uh, some of those that are viewing to ask, uh, ask you all some, some questions. So if, we'd, uh, if we start, Pietro, if you don't mind uh, beginning. Thank you, thank you a lot. Uh, actually, I believe uh, I could have more time than 10 minutes to, to give you my, my short uh, presentation. And uh, uh, anyway, I'll try to be flexible, as we say in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in these occasions. I prepare a, a short briefing. Uh, actually, um, can I have uh, the screen sharing uh, habilitated? Yes, because they'll, they'll it seems provide that, that. Uh, I cannot have it if you don't allow me. Okay. okay. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Um, um, I'm Colonel Mostardi, and uh, since uh, October 2019, uh, I'm the military attaché of the European delegation to Serbia. Um, I'm the first EU military officer to, to be deployed in one of the current... Uh, I have... Uh, uh, something is coming back to my microphone. Um, hello? Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? We hear you fine, yes. Ah, okay, perfect, perfect, okay. So, as I was telling you, I'm the first uh, EU military officer to be deployed as a, a military attaché in the, in the current 140 European delegations spread around the world. And uh, by the European External Action Service, to which I belong to, and I'm also part of the general staff of the European Union. I depend directly by the EU delegation at the mission, which is, who is the ambassador Fabrizi, and by the director general of the European Union military staff, who is Vice Admiral Blejean, who is the successor of General Pulkin. And so this is the first time that a military, a, a, a European Union military attaché speaks, has the possibility to, to talk in, in this uh, um, 
very uh, useful and beautiful events. I have, I have gladly accepted the invitation of the director of the CIS, uh, uh, Dr. Jelena Milic, uh, to speak about the cooperation between uh, the European Union and NATO and the implications for the Western Balkans and Serbia. The topic uh, is certainly challenging and uh, it is in continuous evolution and in this sense uh, this presentation will not be exhaustive. Nonetheless, I believe that it will provide the right keys to, to start a discussion and to discuss and it will be uh, sufficient. So very briefly, because uh, it seems that I have uh, less time than I believed. Okay. Background, uh, European Union and NATO today, EU NATO agreements and regulation, main results, uh, which are represented by the Berlin Plus, the Berlin Plus agreements, which are the core of the relationship between uh, the EU and NATO. Cooperations between uh, the two organizations, uh, the EU Defense Initiative, PESCO project and participation of the third countries, EU NATO in the Balkans, which is the core, and CSDP in Serbia. And what the EU is doing under the CSDP point of view with Serbia. So it could be interesting for all of us, for all of you. Uh, okay, background we can skip. Okay, NATO, European Union, after uh, 23 30s, we arrive to the current uh, European Union's European Union organization. And uh, just for you to, to know that on 2nd October, to remind that on 2nd October 2012, you receive uh, the Nobel Peace Prize for contributing to peace, reconciliation, democracy, and human rights in Europe. Today, we have uh, in the EU 27 uh, members, 21 belong to NATO and six don't belong to NATO. In the NATO, there are 30 members and nine of them don't belong to the EU. This is the situation. Um, so, as we can see, uh, uh, there is a double mix of countries which coexist under two of the most important international organizations, uh, which have common values, but also their own rules. And uh, it was in the air uh, that, was, that there was the necessity to have an agreement and regulation between these two organizations that need large funds, important structures, and a lot of specialized personnel. And for this, we have to come back to the 1996 why? Because uh, uh, it was an important year for the European Union and NATO, because it was the starting point for the so-called Berlin Plus Agreement. We can say that the origin of the Berlin Plus Agreements go back to the meeting of NATO foreign ministers held in Berlin in 1996, during which it was dedicated, uh, in, uh, during which uh, it was, uh, uh, um, there was a dedicated session in which uh, uh, um, the European security was uh, was uh, uh, in some way uh, in some way start the so-called ISD. Uh, the goal was to rebalance relationship uh, relations between the two sides of the Atlantic by creating a sort of European pillar on security. To this end, the European members of the alliance were urged to make uh, concrete progress towards taking on greater responsibility for their common security and defense, and to develop a European military capability that did not, however, duplicate, and this is important, the structures and means already available in the field of NATO. At the NATO summit in Washington in April 1999, the heads of state and government decided to extend the decision taken in the Berlin to operations conducted by the European Union on the basis of the development indicated in the Amsterdam Treaty of 1997 and in the Samalo Declaration of December 1998. In particular, the Amsterdam Treaty envisaged a common European defense and integration of the Western Union into the EU. The EU's mandate and field of action were also defined more precisely through the incorporation of the so-called Petersburg, so Petersburg missions into Article 17 of the Treaty. The joint declaration signed in Saint Malo by France and the UK then uh, ha um, asked that the European Union equip itself with an autonomous capacity for action based on reliable military forces uh, with the means uh, and willingness to use them to respond to international crises. 
Uh, the final communique of the Washington summit welcomed this initiative and with it, the European decision to acquire an autonomous capacity, a compromise between independent, preferred by French diplomacy, and the complementary to NATO, typical of the British vision of management international crisis, as long as they do not conflict with NATO's objectives and nature. European forces should have been separable, but not separated from the structures and commands of the NATO alliance. And thus the process of drafting the so-called Berlin Plus agreements was launched with the aim of ensuring the EU full access to NATO's planning and common capabilities in the event of uh, European-led crisis management operations, as well as using the alliance means and collective capabilities to conduct its mission. The final act of the process was the joint declaration on CSDP, Common Security and Defense Policy, and the exchange of letters between the two organizations. It happened in 2003 regarding Berlin Plus. What I would like to stress is uh, the complementary concept. I would like to stress uh, because uh, uh, this, this concept because uh, the EU will complement NATO, not to duplicate NATO's role in the collective defense of Europe. Uh, in this sense, uh, the comprehensive approach of the EU is different from the NATO one. And using the words of General Pulkinen, the EU focus on societal change rather than military defeat. These are the letters that were exchanged in 2003, just to give you the complexity of the issue and, um, and that it was overcome due to the strong willingness of the European countries uh, and of overseas countries, of course, to find an equilibrium between NATO and the EU. Uh, these are the agreements and the regulation that were signed a kind of synthesis of all those letters, ensure access to NATO's operational planning for the EU, makes NATO common capabilities and resources available to the EU, uh, also called capability basket, pre-identified through the so-called technical arrangement, assigned to the edges operations, the NATO command options, including the development of the European role of Deputy Supreme Allied Commander Europe in the Secure as operational commander for EU mission, which will use the Berlin Plus Agreement, adapt NATO's defense planning system in order to include the availability of forces for EU operations and guarantee a security agreement for the exchange of EU classified information. The main results of the Berlin Plus are in, the, are in the slide from Concordia operation. Um, and we arrive uh, up to Altia mission. Um, I, I don't know if I, if I have time to, to speak about this, but I have just used 10 minutes. No, continue, please, please. Okay, thank you. In some way, thanks to the Berlin Plus, they immediately undertook its first military operation in North Macedonia, fire at that time, from 31st March to 10 December 2003. It's Operation Concordia took over from NATO with the 350 men to ensure a safe and stable environment in line with the Berlin Plus. And uh, secure, the secure was appointed the operational commander and he was assisted by EU director of operations. NATO supported the EU with tactical, operational and strategic planning. And then EU operation HQ was established at shape in months to assist the operational commander. Why I'm telling you all these uh, steps? Uh, because um, <clears throat> if we don't understand what happened in the beginning, of course, uh, all the technicians uh, uh, know these steps, but not all the distinguished uh, uh, um, guests that are joining this, uh, this event have uh, our knowledge concerning in detail about uh, this issue. Um, so the chief of staff, um, so the chief of staff was uh, the, 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 key, the key person for this uh, an, an EU element in the HQ staff. These dual EU and NATO positions ensure the link between the EU and NATO at all levels, 
and the chain of command during the operations. The intervention was successful, but the cooperation with NATO revealed some problems in information sharing in, uh, in the operation. And unfortunately, this problem is still continuing under some aspects. After the EU took over, NATO had maintained a presence on the field to assist Macedonian authorities in the reform of security sector in adapting to NATO standards in view of the countries, the country's entry into the organization and in the protection of borders. After the deployment in the, and then we go to another mission, after the deployment in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which was the first EU peacekeeping mission in full autonomy, and without taking advantage of NATO assets, we are speaking about Artemis operations. In June 2003, it was decided a second, and that today, the last CESDP mission under Berlin Plus regime, we are speaking about EU for Altea, starting BIH in December 2004, taking over responsibility from NATO. <clears throat> Since 2005, the EU has come under pressure to agree with NATO for a kind of Berlin Plus in reverse under which the EU would have made its civilian assets and deployable capabilities available to NATO. Okay. Moreover, uh, uh, on the EU front, the entry of Cyprus and Malta in 2004 had complicated relations with NATO, and still we have, we have these problems. The consequence was that the substantial blocking of the EU-NATO political dialogue and the systematic exclusion from the agenda of any question that was not related to the current mission under the Berlin Plus regime, namely the only Altia mission in Bosnia. The operation in Bosnia was the last to be activated under the Berlin Plus regime, despite the fact that others have been proposed subsequently, for example, in 2006, uh, the Lebanon crisis. Far from uh, having created the Berlin Plus in reverse, the UN and NATO have rather carried out parallel operations in the same context more than once, as in the case of Darfur in 2005, or as in the case of Operation UNA for Atalanta, launched by the, uh, the EU um, on December 2008, after NATO launched the most identical operation, Ocean Sh Shield. The field cooperation developed between the mission in Darfur or the Eulex Kosovo uh, and the Eopol Afghanistan civil missions with the NATO missions in the same areas, it's completely, it's completely asystematic. Probably because uh, the Berlin Plus Agreement don't prescribe anything about civil missions and about the relation between say, autonomous EU and NATO missions in the same, in the same territory. This just to give you the idea about uh, all the missions, what does CSDP mean? Military missions and civilian missions. We can see that the civilian missions uh, are a lot. And uh, uh, so um, this was only because I mentioned the concept on reverse, on Berlin Plus, con Berlin Plus uh, concept on reverse with civilian mission, just to give you the idea about the relationship between uh, civilian missions and military mission in the EU. Uh, this is uh, the current situation in 2020. We have, uh, 70, we have uh, 70 mission. This was the situation in the beginning of 2020. Nowadays, it's different. There are uh, four missions from the military point of view and uh, only nine under the civilian point of view. But in the beginning of 2020, there were 70 missions. And from the beginning of EU, uh, let's say, adventure, we had uh, 34 missions. And the, the objectives are always the same. Peacekeeping, conflict prevention, strengthening internal security, supporting the rule of law, prevention of human trafficking and piracy. Berlin Plus uh, is uh, the core of uh, the relationship between uh, uh, NATO and the EU. Uh, just to recap uh, briefly, Amsterdam Treaty in 1997, in which there was uh, the integration of the Western European Union in the EU, along with the integration of Peters Petersburg mission. St. Malo Treaty, 1998, in which it was developed the EU self-sufficient defense capability concept. 
then Washington 1999, in which the USA were happy, or let's say they accepted the above mentioned EU sufficient defense capability concept. Common declaration 2003, UN NATO for Berlin Plus, there were some uh, uh, common declaration, which are give to the EU the access to NATO planning capability, give to the EU to use common NATO capabilities, the so-called capability basket, give to NATO the operation commander position in uh, all the EU mission where there is a brigade plus a set. Adequate the NATO planning system, which we have to consider also the EU forces for EU operations, guarantee an exchange of information between NATO and the EU. And after that, we had uh, the main three EU missions, Concordia, Artemis, and Altia. Then we had the divorce of summit in 2016, where there was the sign of the European Council president at the time Tusk, the European Commission president at the time uh, Juncker, and the NATO uh, General Secretary Stolberg on seven points to fight the hybrid threats, necessity of maritime security, cybersecurity, defense capabilities, defense and research industry, exercises, improve help to East and to South partners, with a total of 42 proposals. In Brussels summit in 2018, there were 32 proposals more, and we arrived to the famous number of 74 proposals. And then there are the five progress reports from 2015 to 2020. Uh, the last one uh, was uh, uh, the fifth one, uh, uh, which was held on 15 June of this year between the high representative and, and the Secretary General of NATO, which was formally submitted to the respective EU and NATO Council. And the last but not the least, uh, and probably is the most, uh, not, I don't want to say important, but uh, uh, sensitive in this uh, list of uh, documents, is the last one, the Brussels meeting of a few weeks ago. And we will speak about this. Uh, with NATO Secretary General Stolberg and President of the European Council Charles Michel, and also with I representative Borrell, who joined the event upon the Secretary General invitation. The last event is particularly important for us because during, uh, uh, during the event, there were a recap and underline all the key achievements of the five progress report, along with some open issues like Cyprus and Turkey. We are speaking about uh, 10 days ago that both the organization want to solve as soon as possible. There is the willingness to do it. Uh, in addition to formation and achievements, it is important to underline that some open issues continue to pose a serious challenges um, to, uh, to and hamper further strengthening cooperation between the two organizations. They are mainly related to the non recognition of Cyprus by Turkey and long-lasting institutional and legal limitations deriving from the agreed framework of EU-NATO cooperation, which predates Cyprus' accession to the EU in the field of crisis management. In spite of their technical nature, they remain, they remain highly political and can potentially delay, amper or derail. EU-NATO cooperation continues to build open the words of Embrassal Joint Declaration, as well as the implementation of the common set of proposals, the famous 74 points that I've just mentioned, agreed by the respective Council in 2016 and 17. We have gone a long way. Before 2016, interaction between the two organizations had taken place in a sporadic and a, in ad hoc uh, fashion. However, over the past four years, cooperation between staffs had reached an unprecedented level, and it is now the established norm with strong support from member states. Key achievements uh, have been uh, highlighted in uh, five progress reports uh, submitted jointly by the High Representative and the Secretary General uh, to the respective Council. Um, <clears throat> there is a consensus on both sides both side of the town. Um, hello? We hear you. Um, NATO and the EU had to focus on further progress in implementation, and there is no need to add a further proposal to the existing 74 common action. 
At the same time, several member states and allies express their preference for some kind of prioritization among the main areas and the agreed actions of cooperation. There were three key horizontal issues. The first is uh, to ex the, the exercises. For the time being, NATO is not in the position to going beyond a simple rollover, the parallel and coordination exercise plan. Exchange of information. Both the organization will do their best to improve the situation. And non-discrimination. Continued seamless staff interaction on the basis of the full respect of the principle of non-discrimination non remain a key principle, respect by both the organization. And Secretary General Stolberg is supporting of a, a UNATO cooperation and strengthening Europe's security and defense. And in this respect, he underlined the importance of the three NATO key principles, ensuring uh, coherence between the EU and NATO capability development, new capabilities to be developed in the EU framework should, do, should be available uh, to NATO, a full as possible involvement of uh, non-EU allies. The state of play of EU uh, and NATO uh, cooperation and the way ahead uh, is, uh, uh, is shown in the, in the slide. Cooperation with NATO remains a key political priority. The two organizations are mutually reinforcing and answer the UNATO cooperation makes the transatlantic bond stronger. The Warsaw and Brussels joint declaration of 2016 and 18 provide a solid and comprehensive framework with a substantial cooperation agenda. The fifth, uh, the fifth uh, program progress report presented recently by the high representative and vice president and the secretary general confirmed that we have come a long way during the last few years. It reflects continued progress of a good overall dynamic of staff-to-staff -staff interaction in all areas of cooperation, while showing several concrete deliverable across the board. The COVID-19 pandemic only further reinforced the need for strengthening cooperation and closely coordinating effort in key areas, such as strategic communication, with a view to addressing known and emerging vulnerabilities and mitigating the implications of the pandemic to our societies. And then there is a strong need to keep the momentum and the high level of ambition regarding the UNITO cooperation. Despite the significant progress achieved, we have also observed some recurring difficulties and unfortunate setbacks, for example, in the field of exercises and training. Enhanced political dialogue remains an indispensable instrument reinforcing mutual understanding, confidence, and transparency between uh, uh, our two organizations. And we need to join. We need to um, join, reflect, and put forward a pragmatic proposal on how to further improve the frequency as well as uh, the added value of our regular and well-established exchange at all levels, not only at staff level, but also through the fullest possible involvement of uh, member states and allies. With due respect to existing national sensitivities, bilateral issue or uh, grievances should not contaminate the UNATO relationship and undermine the key achievement of the past four years, which have been very important. Reciprocity is, is a key. The fullest possible involvement of non-EU allies in EU defense initiative remains a, a two-way street with the fullest possible involvement of non-NATO EU member states in NATO initiative in accordance with the Brussels Joint Declaration and the full respect of the agreed key principle guidelines, EU NATO cooperation, decision making autonomy, transparency and inclusiveness continue to be a paramount of uh, paramount importance for further strengthening cooperation in a pragmatic, realistic, and mutually beneficial way. These are the EU defense uh, initiative. Um, our strategic partnership with NATO is uh, an integral part of the EU security and defense agenda. At the same time, as recognized by the Treaty of the EU, NATO remains the cornerstone of collective defense for its members. Focus is on the implementation of defense initiative aimed, to, aimed at enhancing the ability of the EU to take care of its own security, thus making the EU a stronger global partner. 
increased EU member states defense capabilities will strengthen NATO, help improving border sharing and uh, contribute to strengthening the transatlantic bond. The EU defense initiative are designed to ensure coherence, complementarity, and interoperability with NATO. Capability developed in the framework of EU defense initiative are owned by member states and they will be potentially available for NATO missions and operations, subject to sovereign national decision, of course. The EU remains uh, full committed to the implementation of its action plan on military mobility. Uh, military mobility is, uh, is, one, uh, uh, is among the flagship of EU NATO cooperation, is one of the uh, aforementioned 74 points. And we arrive to the PESCO, PESCO participation, participation projects of third countries. Um, I would say in, um, that PESCO, uh, to improving military mobility, uh, let's say, has become yeah. one of the commitments under, under PESCO. And at the project, and the, at the project level, level, with a dedicated level, PESCO, PESCO project. project. The negotiations negotiation among the participation of member, member states are still ongoing, are still ongoing, ongoing on the decision, decision on the general on condition the general for the states which participate to participate PESCO, PESCO projects. Project. These conditions, These conditions and related and procedures need to be in line with the legal framework and nature of PESCO, whose primary focus is to enhance the defense cooperation among the EU member states, even if uh, the, de the developed capabilities can also be used in other contexts such as NATO. As the PESCO project are being implemented under the oversight of the Council, there is a required to preserve the use autonomy of decision making and security of information. At the same time, the added uh, value that the participation of third states could bring to the project is also being taken into account and may be uh, updated. Of course, uh, there are a set of general conditions are being elaborated for the participation of third states. The first is the political condition, EU values, CSDP principle, <clears throat> not contravening the security and defense interests of the EU and its member states. The second is substantive condition, added value of the projects without being able to block. In the EU we know, but also in NATO, we know what does it mean if one country block the decision. And third, legal conditions, Security information agreements with the EU. The Council decision uh, would cover also the procedural steps, agreements by the project members, followed by an authorizing Council decision and a project arrangement with the third state. Um, concerning possible cooperation between Operation, why I'm mentioning um, Operation Irini? Because uh, this is the last one, a few, few, few months ago. Irini mean, in Greek means peace. And there is, a, so Irini is the latest EU military mission and it demonstrates the EU willingness to develop and improve the EU CSDP concept. And we are confident in the EU that the ongoing discussion between Operation Irini and NATO will lead to a positive outcome and arrangement such as the one we had for Operation Sofia is in our shared interest. And then there is a, this, the, the, the statement of uh, Mr. Joseph Borrell, the, our I representative concerning Operation Irini. NATO and the EU in the Balkans. The EU and the NATO have been uh, very active in the CSDP, especially in the Balkans. For sure, uh, the EU, uh, as a result, was the, Bal the Balkan battle group, which is an EU battle group originally referred uh, to uh, as Helbrock. Helbrock was the initial of um, Elias for Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, and Cyprus. Today it's on uh, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, and Cyprus. Ukraine entered, in, entered inside the, the battle group in 2011 and Serbia in 2016, and they are active. Mission Altia is uh, a reality which is helping the BIH in a very efficient way. The mission is written in blue. And of course, K4. Under, two, under uh, 1244, under 1244 UN resolution, uh, can be considered as the main stability factor in the Balkans. And uh, we have to stress this. <laughs> in blue, there is uh, uh, its mission. And myself, uh, I mean, uh, I arrived a few months ago. The, the introduction of uh, Milad, which is the military element in the EU delegation, uh, as a EU military attaché, uh, but I'm also uh, as military advisor of the head of the European delegation. 
and I'm supposed to establish a, a close cooperation with member states, meter attaché, of course, in the region, and lies with NATO and the other international stakeholders on meter issues. I, as I told, I'm, I depend directly by the admission and uh, by the director general of uh, European Union military staff, Vice, Vice uh, Admiral Blejean. And these are the three activities that I'm in charge of. Military attaché in the region, I have to link, I have to lies with them, Serbian military institution, international stakeholders, not close. The second uh, uh, MILAD was deployed in the USA in February 2020. And the third one is a premiere. It will be deployed on 4th of August in, uh, in Ukraine. So in a few days. Just to close, the European Union and NATO are constantly evolving and improving their synergies and the consequences in the Balkans can be found daily in the results achieved by current missions such a, as Altia in BIH and K4 and Eulex in Kosovo, recognizing that the presence of NATO in Kosovo is certainly the biggest stability factor in the Balkans. The European Union express its appreciation for the relationship that NATO has developed in the Balkans and the inclusion of uh, Montenegro in 2018 and North Macedonia in March this year, in March of this year, are a clear testimony to a virtuous path developed by NATO and by the aforementioned Balkan nations. Relation between, uh, relations between NATO and Serbia as a member of the P P PFF PFP are also highly valued. Serbia from 1st March 2012 uh, has been officially recognized by the European Council as a candidate state to join the European Union. But to join the European Union doesn't mean joining NATO. And the members of the European Union, such as Austria, Sweden, Finland, Ireland, are a clear testimony of this. Nonetheless, the access process passes through an intensification of the CSDP, the development of the mill-to-mill -mill relation. When I say mill-to-mill, -mill, I didn't mention, mill-to-mill -mill relation consists, uh, sorry, where is it? Uh, the negative aspect of the automatization of the slides is that you, okay. The mill-to-mill -mill relation consists of military training and liaisoning exchange, joint exercise and senior level consultation purpose of building long-term personal relationship. The, this is the CSDP in Serbia. Probably I push, I arrive directly to the conclusion, sorry. What does CSDP in Serbia mean? Uh, during, uh, uh, on the 2nd of June, I had a meeting with General Mozilovic. And uh, during the meeting, I, <clears throat> I, propose, uh, I propose a list of activities and projects approved by the UMS, which could be funded, developed, funded by the EU and developed by uh, the Serbian uh, Armed Forces under the supervision of the UMS. Um, just to make an example, uh, I propose some seminars, some courses, some projects, seminars on PESCO concept, finalities and utilities of CSDP to improve Serbian Minister of Defense representative knowledge and perceptions on what will be their commitment when they will enter the EU. Uh, other seminars on uh, UMS, uh, finalities, projects, utilities, uh, cybersecurity courses for Serbian Ministry of Defense representative in Belgrade er, or, or in Brussels. Cybersecurity is uh, a topic that can be put under both defense and security issues. Courses, courses are a lot, there will be the possibility to develop a lot of courses for countering hybrid threats we could improve the existing good exchange of experience in the hybrid center of excellence in Helsinki, courses for special uh, units forces, for CIMIC, related, related to CIMIC, courses for peacekeeping uh, operations in Africa and the Middle East. Uh, those environment need to have a special knowledge and preparation when you send your people uh, in, in those places. 
Um, then courses project for gender. Nowadays, uh, all the international military missions have a gender core organization and uh, we could ask to Serbia to propose and develop some projects in line with this. Um, and then um, courses project to create some uh, canine units or to improve the existing ones for rescue and security missions, avalanche and so on, earthquake and so on. And some other projects like uh, telemedicine. Serbia has a very well organized uh, military, medic military medical uh, uh, service and probably they will be happy to develop, improve the so-called telemedicine. And we should also consider that the telemedicine could be a cross functions activity. Um, so, I mean, uh, we propose uh, a lot of activities. I mentioned only a few of them to, uh, to the Serbian child. And I hope that we will receive an answer as soon as possible. Um, Colonel Stardi, if I, if I might just interrupt really quickly, this, yes. this was a really uh, comprehensive uh, overview of the relationship between uh, the EU and NATO, and, it, and it's helpful. And I think it's important to point out uh, a point you made earlier, uh, that not enough people understand uh, the relationship in enough uh, detail, understand the level, the structure is based on careful planning, careful coordination, and policy, uh, policy development. But I'd, I'd like to turn now, because I, I, we, we don't have a, a, a lot of time, I'd like to turn now towards uh, uh, how we, some of the practical aspects of the relationship between uh, the EU and, and NATO. And I'd like to turn to uh, Jacqueline Dow now at NATO. Uh, but before I turn it over to you, uh, I've been asked by the, uh, by the uh, coordinators of this meeting to thank you and to thank NATO very much for all the participation NATO has, uh, has committed to uh, today, uh, the last two days during this conference. So thank you. and and. Jacqueline, Thanks please. a lot. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, there you go. You yes, now I can hear you. Okay, now you can hear me. Okay, thanks and thanks for the thank you. And uh, let me just introduce myself very briefly. I'm Jackie Dow. I'm the head of the Western Partnership section in the Political Affairs Security Policy Division at NATO headquarters. Um, and appreciation to the, to the previous briefer, I have a very short presentation. Forgive me if I'm reading a little bit. I'll try to look at the camera even though I'm reading. And I very much hope that I won't duplicate a lot of what has already been said, but I think I was coming at it a little bit from a different angle, not so much from the historical angle, uh, a little bit about NATO-EU cooperation, why we cooperate. Um, why do we cooperate? I think because both organizations work for a common purpose. We share the values of human rights, we share the values of democracy, and we share the values of the rule of law. We cooperate in the region because our aspirations for the region are the same. We work to ensure greater security and stability in the Western Balkans and to increase the capacity of the nations in the region to respond to a range of challenges. And it's in the interest of both our organizations, NATO and the EU, that the region, which includes member nations and partners of both the EU and NATO, is stable, secure and prosperous. So that's why we cooperate, I think. Um, we support the EU accession efforts by the Western Balkan countries. We encourage the continued reforms linked to that. And of course, we continue to follow with interest the developments related to the Belgrade-Pristina dialogue. Our staffs remain in close contact on this. So that's why we, that's why we cooperate, I think. We're also concerned about the, same, about the same challenges. And I think those challenges are shared by every country in the region, including Serbia. And those challenges are to do with organized crime, corruption, terrorism, trafficking, radicalization, and disinformation. And I think you already had a session on disinformation earlier on today with the Assistant Secretary General for Public Diplomacy. I would say, uh, with respect to the presentation of the previous speaker, that NATO-EU co cooperation has been a long time coming. It's been a long time evolving, and I think it's still an e it still is evolving. It's an evolutionary process, but I would say that we have quite strong cooperation based on the 2003 framework and on the two joint declarations from 2016 and 2018, again, which the previous speaker alluded to. And 
we are the two organizations, NATO and the EU, are currently working together on 74 common proposals. I don't intend to go through the 74 common proposals, even if I could, but I think we have specific emphasis on, we place a specific emphasis on strengthened political dialogue, cooperation on hybrid and cyber, military mobility, which was very much mentioned by the previous speaker. We have good cooperation in theater. We focus on assistance to our partners and exercises. And again, exercises was mentioned by the previous speaker too. And if I could just give some examples of the cooperation between the two organizations in those fields, we are seeing increased political dialogue between our two organizations. We're seeing increased you know, cross participation by the high rep and by Secretary General Stoltenberg at respective ministerial meetings. And that counts for something because you need to uh, find out about each other. You need to find out where the easy access points are for cooperation you need to discuss the political problems which are not inconsiderable, which, which will persist. So I think increased political dialogue is very important in the evolution of the relationship. And we are seeing increased political dialogue. We're seeing more meetings of the North Atlantic Council and the uh, Political and Security Committee of the EU, most recently on the COVID crisis. And we are seeing regular reciprocal um, cross briefings at all levels. On military mobility, We've shared with the EU military requirements and guidelines on the transport of dangerous goods. And I know this is a key area of those 74 proposals to be taken forward. On exercises, yes, it's not perfect, but we do regularly participate in respective uh, exercises of each other's organizations. And then the cooperation in theater is longstanding, I believe, coordination and cooperation in the Western Balkans, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in the Mediterranean. And with respect to the Western Balkans, which is the focus of today's uh, uh, debate, of course, uh, Operation Althea, as was mentioned, is a Berlin Plus operation where the EU continues to rely on NATO's command structures in shape. We regularly discuss the developments in the operation in the framework of ambassadorial and military committee meetings between the two organizations. In Kosovo, we have the very long standing close cooperation between ULEX and K4, and that cooperation has been. Um, intensified recently again because of the challenging circumstances related to the COVID-19 pandemic. On hybrid, which is another topic of great interest, we're currently updating guidelines on interaction between the two organizations in hybrid. We see strong uh, cooperation with the Helsinki Center of Excellence, which was again referred to by the previous speaker. And we have regular discussions on counterterrorism. And lastly here, NATO and the EU is cooperating on assistance to partners like Tunisia, Georgia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina in the Western Balkans. And the European Union is contributing to NATO's Building Integrity Program, which helps fight uh, corruption and brings transparency and accountability to the defense sector. And I must say the EU has made a very large financial contribution to that trust fund. In all of this, we strive to ensure complementarity and coherence of effort, and we work to avoid duplication notably with regard to the development of defence capabilities. And again, the previous speaker alluded to the fact that the NATO Secretary General supports EU defence initiatives and has supported those on numerous occasions, because obviously if done properly, these initiatives can contribute to burden sharing and they can certainly strengthen the European pillar of NATO. In this regard, the fullest possible involvement of non-EU allies is essential and would further strengthen those initiatives. So that's all I would want to say really, which is why we cooperate, where we cooperate. And to repeat what I said at the beginning, that this has been a cooperation that has been long in the making perhaps, that has seen um, backpedaling sometimes and then uh, a leap forward. We've certainly seen enhanced cooperation in the last six years since 2014, I would say. And I know for my own division, which uh, also looks after NATO-EU relations on the political side, the enhanced cooperation and collaboration is seen on a daily basis. And with that, I think I would stop. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So uh, I think a conclusion from your, from your uh, short presentation is it's a work in progress. And maybe that's something we could uh, we could we could discuss a little more with the with the next three speakers in the conversation after. So we've talked a little bit about how and why, and let's uh, let's try to take a look at how this relationship actually uh, shapes the security situation in the, in the Western Balkans. So Roland, if you'd uh, if you'd go ahead and uh, and share with us your thoughts. Well, thank you, John. Thanks all of you for having me. Great to be back in Belgrade, if only virtually, and uh, see so many longstanding friends um, like Yelena Milic, the indispensable. Um, so uh, let me, after so much has been said about NATO-EU relations, 
and their effects on the Western Balkans. Let me maybe zero in a little bit on the relationship between the European Union and the Western Balkans, and more specifically, the European Union and Serbia. Because we all know that, um, <clears throat> that uh, NATO and Serbia, we can talk about enhanced cooperation, we can talk about improved uh, uh, common projects and so on, but when we talk about membership, the big question uh, is the EU membership of, of Serbia um, and other Western Balkan countries. So, um, you know, I'm in a bit of a dilemma. I mean, I could be totally polite and say everything is great and hunky-dory, as the saying goes, or I can be realistic and risk being impolite. Um, also, realistic, please. Also to, also to the European Union itself, by the way. So I will choose a middle way between those. Um, I'll try to be realistic and remain polite. So um, three points. Uh, first, um, what is helpful to bring the Western Balkans, again, particularly Serbia, closer to EU accession? Second, a couple of points that are not so helpful. And third, uh, where I see some positive change after initial blunders by the European Union, by the European Union itself. Um, so, you know, the Western Balkans general in their relationship with the European Union seem to be caught in what has been called the middle income trap. In other words, a kind of um, uh, stagnation where membership uh, uh, is not immediately uh, a perspective, negotiations have begun, but um, we're actually seeing in some respects mounting obstacles. So what is helpful in this process? Of course, helpful would be increasing civil liberties, would be improving, intensifying judicial reform, fighting organized crime, um, uh, fighting uh, corruption, the economic reform, uh, in other words, to bring countries closer to the so-called Copenhagen criteria, also in the economic sense, to be able to withstand uh, competition in the single market. And of course, to shape relations with Russia and China in such a way <laughs> that they're helpful, actually, for uh, uh, bringing these countries and bringing Serbia closer to European Union membership. And that brings me to my second point. And here I'm, 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 I'm maybe zeroing in a little bit on the China factor, where I think that um, there is a severe risk that the development that Serbia-China relations have taken uh, recently, not only since, um, but of course, especially since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this direction uh, risks actually um, uh, jeopardizing uh, closer relations with the European Union and certainly uh, any, any uh, imminent, succession, uh, imminent accession to, to the EU. You know, many Chinese investments, or the character of many Chinese investments, actually slows down economic reform or, or takes the Serb economy in a direction that automatically leads it away from uh, EU standards. Um, this is particularly true for environmental standards. We talk about uh, Chinese investment in energy infrastructure and so on. Uh, it usually takes the, uh, uh, the, 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 the facts on the ground in Serbia in a different direction from uh, being compatible with EU standards. Um, we have, uh, for example, the export of Chinese facial recognition technology to Serbian authorities, uh, which is uh, not compatible with, um, with EU privacy uh, uh, principles. Um, the kind of debt that is usually tied to Chinese credits for uh, countries, not only Serbia, but many other uh, uh, many other countries in the world, this kind of debt very often results ultimately in a kind of dependence 
you know, it may be nice in the beginning because it comes without the, uh, uh, the, the burdensome conditionality that the EU very often ties to uh, financial uh, support, but uh, it leads to a kind of dependence, which, for example, in case of default, results then in a takeover of strategic infrastructure by China. Another element um, that is not really conducive to, uh, 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 to closer, closer relations with the EU or future accession. Uh, and finally, I want to say that uh, initiatives uh, in the Belt and Road Initiative, um, the, uh, the secrecy uh, that is connected to the question of who gets what kind of, uh, uh, or, or what kind of contract in this framework, all this is not conducive to, uh, to bringing Serbia and bring other Western Balkan countries closer to EU standards. Third point, um, the EU itself. Uh, I'm far from saying that everything went perfect and I'm very self-critical, especially at the beginning of the corona pandemic of the EU's action. We all know that, well, even within the European Union, countries suddenly uh, thought only about their own country and not about their partners within the EU. And the same was true, of course, for the EU's partners in the Western Balkans, most of all Serbia, at which point China came in with very spectacular um, deliveries of assistance and aid. But I would say the EU got its act together. And if you look at the figures today, a total of over 400 million euros uh, reallocated in, in, in bilateral financial assistance to the Western Balkans altogether. For Serbia itself, 15 million euros immediate support for the health sector, 78.4 million of support for the social and economic recovery. Uh, and, and where I would claim that the EU has um, turned around in uh, has um, recognized the problematic approach uh, initially during the pandemic and uh, has tried to improve uh, with Serbia. Unfortunately, this was not as publicized in the Serbian uh, uh, public debate as the previous uh, uh, "Quote unquote refusal of the EU to deliver and the, and the, the Chinese assistance." Uh, uh, I will have some improvement or a learning curve in the prioritization of issues in the membership in the accession negotiations, um, where the European Union has introduced a new methodology, which uh, which starts with rule of law to avoid conflicts on that at a later stage. And uh, uh, where generally the principle is more for more, more assistance for more progress on reform and on bringing countries closer to the single market in their regulations and standards. So um, while being uh, uh, critical on both sides, I see some, some uh, rays of hope at least a learning process on the EU side. And I would love to uh, also see this on the other side. So thank you very much. Thank you, Roland. Thanks very much. Um, I wanna follow up a little on the, uh, the China issue, but let me, let me uh, give the next two speakers an opportunity to, uh, to speak before I do so. Uh, so next I'd like to turn to uh, Professor Andrew Mikta from the, uh, the Marshall Center. So are you, you there? Yes, I am. And Yelena, Perfect. great to see you. Uh, thank you for inviting me and thank you for being the powerhouse that you are with everything that you do. Uh, since I work for the US government, before I speak, I need to say that I'm expressing my private views as analyst and not the policy or position of uh, the Marshall Center, the Defense Department or the US government. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna take a slightly different take and maybe piggyback a bit on what uh, Roland has been saying. Um, we are now six years out since uh, the seizure of Crimea. And we've gone through multiple summits at NATO and I, I really appreciated uh, the comments from both uh, Colonel Mostardi and from, uh, from the NATO rep. Um, but I have to tell you that I continue to feel a bit wanting 
when I look at where we are, not in terms of EU-NATO cooperation, because I think there are a lot of projects that are ongoing, uh, but what concerns me is that uh, we are continuing to struggle to reach some general broad agreements, um, especially when it comes to where the United States is on Russia and China, and where a lot of our European allies are on Russia and China. And Roland very eloquently also spoke of how China increasingly is playing a role uh, in this larger relationship when it comes to the Balkans. Um, as you all know, obviously, that we have the High Reflection Group now ongoing, chaired by Wes Mitchell and, and uh, Mr. Demazir. Um, my expectations and my hope is that at the tail end of that process, we will have reached uh, a, a larger consensus within the alliance on China. In a nutshell, I would argue China is now seen in the United States as both a, as a military and economic problem set. Uh, and in Europe, I would argue it is still seen largely in economic terms. And the security dimension, even though it is clearly noted, uh, I think by NATO is only, is only beginning to come uh, over the horizon. Uh, second point I'd like to make, which is very important, there's a larger um, question of how not just EU-NATO relationship will evolve going forward, but the larger transatlantic relationship. And I think that is fundamental for the future of the Balkans. Um, what do I mean by that? The United States is now clearly in a new phase when it comes to looking at Russia and China. We we spent about 30 years uh, with most of the people arguing that expert-driven modernization will bring about uh, a transformation in Chinese uh, domestic politics and China will also become uh, a what, what some of my colleagues call a responsible stakeholder in the international system. I think what the COVID crisis has exposed uh, is not only that this was largely a myopic view, but in my view, it also exposed vulnerabilities when it comes to the supply chains uh, what we have witnessed is a, what I call in some of my, my writing, a radical centralization of the supply network chain. The reason China was able to operate the way it did in the Balkans, positioning itself initially as Roland uh, pointed out, as being this, this supplier first resort is because what we have allowed to happen is, is essentially uh, in the name of globalization, a very predatory market policy pursued by, by our Chinese uh, partners. The United States clearly is now at an inflection point when it comes to how we will deal with China. A lot of other countries are also looking at possible uh, re-onshoring of the supply chains. Uh, you probably are tracking the Japanese are expecting about 30, 32% of their manufacturing to be either onshored back to Japan or pushed to other areas. And there's a serious conversation about this in the United States as well. So um, to me, the key defining factor for the future of EU-NATO relations is how the larger conversation on China and Russia will evolve. Uh, from the US perspective, what we have is essentially not one like we had during the Cold War, but potentially two near peer competitors, especially in the military arena. Russia is a quintessentially revisionist power in Europe it wants to revise and reorder the post-Cold War settlement. And I don't have to tell our Balkan friends that, that you know, this is happening all across the board along the Eastern flank going, going from North to South. China is even a bigger problem set. I would argue China wants to replace the existing liberal international order with an order that will be built not on the maritime domain as we have seen over decades, but will be built on a continental China-centered domain. Um, uh, Roland spoke about the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, in my view, this is one of the most fundamental threats that is currently being posed by the Chinese when it comes to the future of US-European relations and the overall relationship uh, within Europe itself. Uh, if the Chinese succeed in building a secure um, supply chain that they can then defend and protect, uh, then they will be posing a very serious challenge in the maritime domain to the United States and our allies. Finally, a kind of more practical question. 
I have been a great supporter, and this is maybe to, to um, Colonel Mostardi's comment and, and his, his, his very thorough brief. I, I have been, I used to be a great supporter of PESCO card, European Defense Fund and so forth. Um, coming, in at, coming at it from the position that I think uh, uh, Senator uh, Graham took, anything that enhances European military capability is a positive development. What concerns me now is not only duplication, but what concerns me is that uh, we continue to uh, talk in terms of institutions, organizations, projects, whereas what we have in effect in Europe is the inadequate capability of exercise trained military power, uh, whether you put it within the NATO structure or you put it within the EU structure. I, I am a great fan of, of both. But what I am concerned about is that you look not only at the targets not being met from the NATO commitments, the perennial 2%. I frankly don't really care whether it's 2%, 3%, 1.5%. One and, one and what I care about is whether or not we have exercised military capabilities available uh, for missions for NATO and the European Union. Why do I say this? And I will conclude on this because I, I really look forward to this discussion. Um, the United States is coming out of two decades uh, of, of incessant warfare, essentially, global war on terror, overseas contingency operations, things that we have been engaged in that have not only uh, used up some of our capabilities, but also restructured our military for these kinds of missions. Uh, we're now in the process of rebuilding. We're now looking at great power competition, Russia and China, uh, uh, much more than, than uh, we look at, uh, at uh, overseas contingency operations. But what that means is that our force, our joint force today is being pulled into directions and into two theaters. And if you look at how rapidly the Chinese have been modernizing their military, uh, how, how much they've been increasing the development of their naval force. Uh, my charge and my message to, to our European allies, friends and partners is, you need to develop exercise military capabilities to ensure that in the event we have a crisis in the Indo-Pacific, that would pull a lot of American resources in that direction. The Europeans are capable with the US strategic nuclear deterrent, with the US enablers, but nonetheless, with European power to deter uh, any potential revisionism from Russia. Otherwise, uh, you will be blackmailed or, or worse. So I keep, I keep arguing and calling for some path for uh, NATO and the EU, but more broadly, the Europeans and the United States to work jointly to provide that kind of deterrent. This will be of critical importance to the stability along the flank and the stability in the, in the Balkans as, as well. Again, these are my private views and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, brought up a few important issues, China capabilities, uh, and I, we will circle back to these. But before we do, Suzanne, I know you've been waiting patiently. Uh, and so I want to give you uh, the opportunity to speak last, and then we'll circle back around to uh, address a number of uh, really important and interesting questions that have been raised thus far. Please. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I want to thank the organizers, the Center for Euro Atlantic Studies, for this uh, interesting event that has become a tradition in Serbia. The only place where we talk about Euro Atlantic integration, usually we focus on European integration without the Atlantic part. So it's an even greater pleasure to be a part of this. And when you say the last one at the panel, you, when, when you're the last one at the panel, you risk uh, repeating yourself. So I reformulated something that I wanted to say because we heard a lot about the cooperation between the EU and NATO in the context of the Western Balkans. And this is the part that I will skip over. I think we received plenty of information that the participants can use later in the discussion or to ask questions. I wanted to say something about a few things. Uh, I will not be long. We want to leave uh, room for questions and discussion. And the first one is that the foreign policy priorities of most countries in the Western Balkans are, are aligned in several segments. That is European Euro Atlantic integration, improvement of uh, neighborly relations, the need to strengthen the role of these countries in an international 
organizations. All countries in the Western Balkans, with the exception of Serbia, are clearly uh, determined to join the uh, North Atlantic Alliance and has created a new geostrategic environment in the Western Balkans because also all countries, with the exclusion of Serbia and uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, are now members of NATO. NATO encircled the entire Western Balkans because uh, it has uh, representatives or bases in all the countries, uh, along with uh, agreements that allow this uh, through in a logistical and strategic uh, context. NATO reacts more efficiently and faster than the European Union, both for the com more complex uh, structure of the EU and the unclear leadership, uh, unlike NATO. Due to the slowed process of accession of uh, candidate countries and the uh, EU's burdening with other things, the impact on the Western Balkan regions will be exerted more through NATO probably than through the accession to the EU in the accession process, because NATO will remain um, present in the Western Balkans uh, in the following period. And uh, besides the European Union, NATO will provide further support to the dialogue between Pristina and Belgrade. It will have a further role in the implementation of the reached agreements insisting on the democratization and regional cooperation, resolution of bilateral disputes as a criteria for uh, joining uh, is uh, the, the result of uh, NATO's efforts to apply its values, along with the uh, desire to avoid the renewal of conflicts in the Western Balkans. Countries in the Western Balkans need to be actively encouraged to uh, develop uh, its, their links among them in each other, uh, so as to resolve disputes. One of such initiatives was the initiative uh, Small Little Schengen, which is now on hold during the pandemic, but I hope that soon we will be able to say more about this. The greatest problems faced by the Western Balkan region in European integration may be classified into three groups. The first group has common problems shared by all countries in the region. The second one are country-specific problems, and the third one is external problems, which threaten the further success of European integration of the region. Former communist uh, countries in Central and Eastern Europe did not have uh, a formal obligation in their European agreements to cooperate with the neighbors, but such uh, an obligation as a condition for progress in the European integration is part of the accession negotiations of the Balkan countries so as to overcome the co consequences of uh, conflicts in the 90s. For instance, Serbia and, and Albanian uh, negotiations about the status of Kosovo are a good example of the uh, of this, where we have a constructive negotiations for a time and then have uh, a falling back, a regression uh, because of this uh, conflict long ago. Of course, uh, we also have the impact of uh, foreign actors, external actors, when we heard something about this, but. Uh, European Union uh, actors are trying to fill a void that uh, exists here and to uh, impose their own interests. A school of thought says that uh, Russian influence is aimed primarily at uh, preventing the further spread of NATO and, uh, and also the further expansion of the European Union, but the alternative opinion states that Russia neither can nor may prevent uh, the European Union from expanding to the Balkans, but has ambitions to firm, set a firm uh, foothold uh, in the uh, Western Balkan countries so as to have a long-term impact on the Union itself once the countries join it. If the European Union does not wish to completely jeopardize its transformative power and dominant impact, it may not avoid its own uh, strengthened role in the region. The second factor was also covered. This is China. Uh, Serbia is the leader in uh, cooperation with China. In, sh in the short run, this uh, cooperation was useful for Serbia, but of course there is a question of how further uh, the cooperation will uh, 
reflect on the foreign policy orientation of Serbia, whether there will be any negative uh, impacts on the future of European integration. Therefore, the European Union should uh, provide a clear path to the, mem the membership of uh, the Western Balkan countries so as to prove to be a counterbalance to the Russian and Chinese impact. It needs to have the predominant imp uh, impact on the economic development and to fill the hollows in the development of uh, the economies in the Western Balkans. So a greater financial aid is required than the one that is provided right now. I uh, followed the summit, which, which is a historical summit, which ended in a huge compromise, but it was also a lot of, there was also a lot of bargaining there. And for the pre-accession aid for the Western Balkans was not increased by even 10% for the following seven years, which is not enough for any serious economic development. So what we are awaiting are the details of this uh, announced uh, financial, economic, uh, developmental plan that will be presented in the autumn. So if the European Union wants to pr maintain its dominant position as the key trade partner and donator and investor, then it should uh, support the region as a whole in a more substantial way, since the region would, would then uh, approach the West uh, faster and uh, reduce the lag, which can be measured in decades. I think this situation is, no, is in no one's interest. But on the other hand, China was presented as the savior of some countries, while the European Union is often wrongfully assumed to not do anything. This should be a wake-up call to the European Union, but it's a question whether this it will have the political will to face the ch challenge of China globally and in the Western Balkans. I just wanted to say something about the potential membership of Serbia in NATO. I think uh, a lot has been said about this cooperation already. And whether membership is possible or not, I think the greatest uh, obstacle is public opinion. We've seen this in the report this morning. Even if there was political will, public opinion says no, clearly. Um, systems would adapt uh, quickly both the armed forces which has for years been cooperating excellent in an excellent way with uh, nato but society is not ready for this step yet and it's a question whether it will be at any point and on the other hand we have the danger of if uh, bosnia and herzegovina joins nato then serbia will be the isolated country or self-isolated country in this security uh, sense. So the relationship, uh, the, 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 the position of the public is the greatest obstacle to uh, membership. Support is uh, either dwindling or stagnating around 10%. Even if public opinion was not so predominant, and if there were politicians who were brave enough to talk about this uh, subject freely, there is another huge obstacle in this path, which is the issue of Kosovo, because NATO would not uh, accept a country that is not uh, certain where its state boundaries lie. This is uh, certain. So n countries with unresolved territorial disputes. But if we leave this aside, if all if everything would fall into place, and still this is a step that would not happen all at once, but it would it would uh, take uh, place in a long-term process that is conditioned by the internal policy and foreign policy developments that is finalized by the invitation for membership. So the Mang Montenegrin membership action plan was received in December 2009. The invitation for accession was received in December 2015 and it joined in 2017. So it took her took it eight years. Uh, Croatia received the MAP in 2002 and the accession invitation in 2008 and it joined in 2009. So that is seven years. There is no greater 
or more significant uh, guarantee for the inviolability of borders than uh, NATO membership. This is uh, the existential reason why Macedonian political elite has chosen the most difficult step when it comes to the changing the name of their country. Despite all the advantages of European integration, security and safety is provided by the other actor. I think membership in NATO would be beneficial for all six countries in the Western Balkans uh, in the long term, and it would resolve their security dilemmas. However, the main obstacle is public opinion, and I think that um, not only now, but much more frequently, we will we'll be able to open a rational and argumented uh, discussion about the advantages of uh, membership of Serbia in NATO. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Susanna. Uh, that was a great wrap up, actually. I'm glad you were last on my list. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you provided a, 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 little, a little bit of a foreshadowing of how I wanted to bring this. So with the last few minutes we have remaining, uh, the last three speakers talked about China. And I think we should, I think we should address that a little more. Um, there are a lot of things we can address, but I think this is, this is an important uh, topic. Um, Roland, you talked about uh, the fact that uh, the, the Chinese investments take us away from a European uh, perspective, uh, take it away from the EU. Um, Susanna talked about this being a wake-up call, that uh, there needs to be more investment, more attention paid by the Europeans, uh, by the West, uh, to, to the region and the economic conditions in the region. There's this extremely practical point, and maybe this is, we'll oversimplify it, but this affects opinion, public opinion, and it affects the discussion we're having. Tomorrow, I'm going to drive from Belgrade to uh, to Chachak. A few years ago, before uh, Milos Veliki, the highway opened up, which the Chinese helped to build, it took me three hours to make that trip. It takes me less than an hour and a half now. My life is easier now. My life is easier. This, has a, this is an impact, this is a daily impact on people's lives. Many will argue that the Europeans keep moving the bar for integration. Roland, I see you, you're getting ready and I look forward to, to hear. No, this is, but this, but this is the type of, we agree, we agree on what the Chinese uh, investment means in the long, long term, but how do we address this in today? How do we address the impact it's having on people's daily lives, the positive impact it's having on people's daily lives? And how do we have this conversation as Europeans, as, as Americans? Who'd like to start? Rollin, go ahead, please. Yeah, well, thanks. Um, look, there is, in all accession processes, no matter at what stage they are, you have a, um, there is an inbuilt uh, paradox, okay? The EU is trying to bring countries closer by tying its own assistance to progress in reform. Uh, this progress itself, it should be a goal in itself for the accession country or for the candidate country. But very often it is not. It is perceived as a painful process. Why do we have to reform? You know, why, do we have to, why, why do we have to make our judiciary more independent? We don't really want that. You know, we, we, we only want to, we're only going to do it if the EU uh, you know, uh, increases assistance by so and so much invests into our infrastructure by so and so much or brings the accession date closer. Now, I mean, this is, that's unfortunately the way it works usually, but that's not the way it is supposed to work. The EU is ultimately there to, to give the modernization processes of countries a direction and a speed to provide some kind of direction to the reform process. But the reform process should be accepted as something good in itself, right? Whereas I think the, the kind of assistance that China gives, yes, it improves your, 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 your driving, John. Uh, the, the driving time is shortened by half. Okay, fine. But there are so and so many um, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, traps contained in the way China is acting, especially in the Western Balkans. I wish this was discussed, discussed more openly, and I wish that the, the more for more approach of the EU wasn't taken as some kind of undue outside interference. China is not doing anything to bring Serbia closer to becoming a modern, functional market economy with the rule of law and fundamental rights for its citizens. China is not contributing one bit to that. And I wish that this was a topic for public debate in, in Serbia and other Western Balkan countries. Uh, so, so, I mean, this would be my wish uh, to, 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 to openly and freely and frankly talk about these, um, let's say, th these caveats about co strategic cooperation with China and to be a little bit less critical about a European Union that seems to be a pesky outside kind of, uh, you know, interfering force uh, that only asks painful steps from the accession countries. No, these steps are good for the countries themselves in themselves. So, I mean, that's my plea. So, so this, this is a, this is an important answer, a, a more robust and, uh, and pointed public debate about what, it, what, what these investments mean uh, and what these relationships mean. Um, before, before I ask the next question, Yellen, I, uh, you mentioned you wanted to make a comment, please. So everyone, I was really happy to listen to all your contributions. I'm not quite certain how many of you attended our morning panels, especially the findings of public opinion survey. I will just reiterate a couple of things from our survey that could contribute. It seems to me that the consensus in Serbia is um, that it is the national interest of Serbia the, to become members of EU. However, the road towards EU membership uh, is perceived differently. Very often in Serbia, uh, citizens do not know the majority of the countries of the EU are also NATO member states. Um, so very often we have 50% of support for membership in EU, and yet less than 15% of support for membership in NATO. Uh, however, under the present Serbian administration, we have uh, almost 50% of uh, citizens uh, very much in support of cooperation with the United States in terms of defense and security, which I think is also a very positive uh, finding that also leads us down the path of EU integration. And yes, we do have all the, the issues that Mr. Freunstein identified, but do bear in mind that during the bombing, several Chinese diplomats uh, have also uh, been a victim. And Russia also plays a role in, um, in political uh, dialogue on Belgrade and Pristina because international documents give them the right to play the role. So we should really assess uh, carefully the communication and the cooperation between Serbia and China and Serbia and Russia. Only once the cause of conundrum has been resolved can we truly assess uh, the um, cooperation between Serbia and China and Serbia and Russia. I do understand that China has become a very interesting topic on uh, the global uh, arena, and all this Roland says they did not contribute to the democratization of Serbia, they are not working in detriment to, of democratization of Serbia the way Russia does. In Serbia, I don't think that China is the problem, and I would remind you of something President Fuji said when, uh, when it comes to the scope of our cooperation with China and the scope of German cooperation with China, I think the that German-China cooperation is way ahead of us. So 
uh, the issue of cooperation between the EU and the EU and China is, uh, of course, something that's going to be debated. But uh, I think that first and foremost, we have to find a compromise uh, solution to the issue because that would keep uh, Serbia on the path not just to integration, but anchor Serbia on the Western, uh, on the, on the Western political front. So it doesn't really matter which administration is going to be in power when this consensus is reached. We have to observe the non-partisan way and improving relations between Serbia and the United States should be perceived not as a zero-sum game in relation to Pristina or Sarajevo or other countries of the region or even in relation to Berlin, but as a win-win situation for all the countries of the region and for the European Union and NATO itself. It seems to me that Serbia's perception is that the United States and even NATO understand the situation better than the European Union. And if I have to choose one key takeaway of everything we've heard from this morning uh, to the present time, this is the importance of survival and presence of KFO, uh, fulfillment of their mission, uh, KFO remaining in undiminished capacity in Kosovo, and such demands coming from uh, the country. Serbia, uh, where citizens uh, believe that uh, NATO has bombed us uh, for no reason whatsoever, and 76%, according to our Savi, believe so. You see that there is a strong support for K4. So, NATO led uh, mission keeping, uh, peacekeeping mission. So, it seems to me these are all positive steps or positive trend that should. Uh, when put together, lead in the right direction. About a week ago, there were very violent protests in Serbia, supposedly due to newly announced repressive uh, uh, measures in the fight against uh, COVID epidemics. And there are many uh, direct evidence to show that different Russian structures uh, were involved or different pro-Russian Serbian structures. Uh, they all took the part in organizing this protest or in support of these protests. Um, we wrote reports on this topic and published it uh, and distributed widely. However, a week ago, we were never uh, told that we have reported uh, wrongly or we were never uh, openly attacked. Uh, however, this particular time they have intervened and reacted to major countries of NATO, their embassies in Serbia, Norway, and the United States have noted organized attempts of so called peaceful demonstrations, um, um, direct attempts to provoke police and uh, they describe the violent methods while all other member states uh, spoke about peaceful demonstrations against authoritarian power. However, we had peaceful demonstrations before, yet none of them ended up with attacks on the police and throwing stones and burning uh, garbage containers. So. I really wonder what else needs to happen to understand that uh, Russia is really taking decisive steps in intervening on the Serbian political scene, just like before, uh, during the difficult times in North uh, Macedonia or uh, during the elections in the Montenegro. So, maybe we should bear in mind uh, and uh, view it from this perspective that currently we have a government that is strengthening relations and cooperation with the United States and looking towards EU um, and isn't support to this government something that should be done rather than uh, attacking it 
due to a Russian provoked protest. In this way, we are putting additional obstacles to Serbia's path uh, to EU membership and Euro Atlantic integration in general. So this conference is taking place, of course, in the times of this uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, the first purchases of the ventilator were from our Chinese partners. Without purchasing ventilator from China, uh, Serbia will not be able to fight against COVID epidemic. Yes, mm, there was expressions of gratitude to China because they came to our assistance first. On the other hand, when EU assistance started coming to Serbia, uh, Serbian politicians reacted similarly. They also expressed their gratitude towards EU. So I think uh, these attacks in Serbia are not justified. Carl Bill says, um, uh, President of Serbia came to welcome uh, the planes with Chinese humanitarian assistance. And why didn't he come out to the airport to welcome EU planes? On the other hand, our prime minister was there. She was there at the airport to welcome EU assistance. So maybe if not President of Serbia, there was the prime minister. She expressed her gratitude directly to the EU ambassador to Serbia. Order. EU delegation to Serbia. So uh, this somehow fell under the radar. I think we should observe all the events and from a broader uh, perspective in a wider context and understand different um, uh, crises that Serbia is facing uh, these present times. On one hand, also on the other hand, uh, COVID epidemic. As Mrs. Grubishit said, let's take a look at uh, how uh, Serbia reacted to United States uh, activities relating to uh, deblocking the dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina. We see that EU has reacted negatively. Uh, both uh, French and German politicians spoke uh, practically against any kind of proposed solutions. And yet, before this, this was not the case. I don't think that uh, uh, that the negative comments should be addressed at Brussels in Berlin. So let's take a look at this package that the uh, United States is offering, stronger political integration, offering better in, uh, uh, economic environment for indirect investment, since, uh, including American investors. I hope that the next panel uh, we'll be able to hear um, more about uh, good neighborly relationships and opening trades across the region, including mini Schengen zone and many other bilateral agreements. Serbia is improving relations with Greece, uh, Romania, Hungary. You might have objections to the state of democracy in Hungary or criticize Orban, but for citizens in Serbia who are in favor of membership uh, of Serbia in NATO in EU, strengthening cooperation with uh, Hungary, member state of both EU and Russia, is a proper path to diminishing both Russian and Chinese influence. So, so let, me, let me conclude by following up on the theme there, support for Serbia. Uh, support for Serbian leadership. And you, you touched on it at the, at the very end there, the idea of uh, the regional cooperation, uh, some sort of regional cooperation effort uh, agreement, whether it's called the mini Schengen or whatever. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to bring you all the way in, just to, let's wrap it up a couple minutes each, starting with Professor Mikta. Is that, is that something that the West, that the Europeans, that the Americans should be supporting this idea of, uh, of some sort of a cooperative agreement, economic, that that will in fact move uh, the economies forward, making people's lives better and improving their European perspectives. Sir. Thank you, from my perspective, look, regional cooperation, especially for the countries uh, that like countries in, in the Western Balkans, need investment, uh, need uh, initiatives that provide alternatives to simply Chinese capital coming in, you described the experience of driving on a new highway. 
Um, I think coming up with a comprehensive approach that would bring more regional cooperation, especially in the economic area, uh, that will be, in my view, a, a very important step forward. Um, finally, I would say, uh, look, it, these are not huge economies. The level of investment that's needed is not massive. Uh, we uh, need to make sure that whatever economic activity takes place, takes Serbia closer to the European Union, closer to the NATO structures. And, and if, if we don't think in those terms, what you will have is essentially the kind of Chinese debt for equity uh, investments, and that will put more and more distance between uh, a vital region for European security, which is the Western Balkans, and the larger transatlantic community. Uh, I think we should give it very serious thought. Thank you. Thank you. Susanna, any concluding thoughts yes. on that? Yes, yes, uh, I will, but I will speak in Serbian, uh, as agreed initially. Uh, I think uh, that if uh, Washington and Brussels uh, look at things from the economic aspect, it is uh, clear that Serbia and Kosovo would find it very important to have the ability of free movement and investment that would not create multi-generational foreign debt. This is uh, number one. Number two, uh, large Schengen. Schengen zone was a social uh, and economic game changer for 26 European countries. There is not a single reason why its variation should not exist in the Western Balkans and yield positive results. We should, of course, involve Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro and Kosovo so that we can have a true mini Schengen zone. That is all I want to say. Thank you. Rowan, thoughts on that final conclusion? Oh, yeah, Good. just, just uh, the, the cooperation among the countries of the Western Balkans will be absolutely helpful for, for ultimate accession to the EU, but it should not be confined to only uh, a free travel and, and, and economic cooperation. I think what is much more essential here is, is reconciliation after a painful past. And, you know, that takes painful compromise from all sides concerned every day. It's yes, the most yes. difficult part, probably. Yes. I agree. Thank, thank you both. Uh, Jacqueline, any concluding um, thoughts? Not on economic integration, no, not from the NATO perspective. From a personal perspective, I could only say that regional cooperation, reconciliation, who, who could be against it? That's my personal perspective. <laughs> and uh, Colonel, any final thoughts? Mm, yes, thank you. Uh, time. Time is what we need. I mean, uh, um, the EU is working in the right direction. Of course, what I'm telling now uh, to all of you is uh, my personal point of view is not the EU uh, delegation point of view. Uh, but we need time because uh, um, the European Union dele delegation, the European Union in general is working in the right direction. But you know, it's not easy to put in the head of people some ideas. I'm agree with the, I agree with Roland when he speaks about uh, the, the Chinese uh, companies and so on, but uh, I, when you said that you were happy, John. Uh, John, uh, when you said that you were happy to 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 go to Kajak in only one hour and a few minutes, <laughs> this is what uh, this is uh, what the 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 man on the road is uh, thinking because <laughs> in the end it was a uh, it's easy for him, as you know. So the Chinese uh, company which has built the highway has the, has uh, in some way helped <laughs> the, the 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 man on the road which think is this way. Uh, some other comments uh, is that, uh, um, of course, we need time. We need time and uh, to, uh, the, the, the Serbia will have to uh, fulfill all the, all, the, all, the, all the chapters in the proper way um, before entering uh, uh, the EU. But again, uh, it is not something that happens in a uh, in few times. So, uh, give time to the young generation to change, to think about what is happening, and uh, I'm pretty positive. Thanks. You can conclude, it doesn't matter. Th thank, thank you all, uh, 
and with that, we're going to conclude the session. I think the, uh, the, the final thought, as Jacqueline said during her presentation, this is a work in progress. It's important to continue, continue the hard work, however long it takes, uh, whether it's reconciliation, whether it's economic and political uh, uh, progress, uh, but, but we need to keep moving forward. Um, and, um, and with that, thank you all very much for your time this afternoon. And uh, I hope to see you uh, soon in Belgrade. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Elena, all the best. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All the best. Bye. Dragi svi, dobro došli na naš slajd panel, znači regionalne saradnje. Veliko mi je čast i zadovoljstvo da predstavim našeg moderatora za slika od Rine Kraljevine Norveške, Egele Kvaleti. Svi jedan od standardnih učesnika Beogradske nedelje i kolega koji nam dosta pomogne što je najteže i sa govornicima i sa odličnim savjetima i sa odličnim intervencijama. Meni je jako milo što da Danas imamo ovako dobar panel o jednoj temi koju zemlje kao što je tvoja mogu mnogo iskustva da podijele u različitim oblastima i ekonomije i bezbednosti i odbrane, ali tvoje znanje o regionu i dugogodišnji angažnje u regionu nam pomaže da sva ta znanja i moguće oblike jednog i drugog forme regionalne saradnje vidimo šta je od toga provodljivo na Balkanu, šta su ovih specifičnosti Balkana koje neke stvari omogućavaju, a ne kad državni izvon. And here in the Balkans, so please take the floor. Thank you for the kind introduction, Jelena. Uh, we have, uh, we have a, a um, really, good, really panel. good panel. We have, we have uh, Tim Lannan, who's, the, who's acting the acting head of the Euro Atlantic Disaster Response Coordination Center. We have, we have Goran Svjanovic, who's, the, who's former the former foreign minister of Serbia and Montenegro. We have, we have uh, Baron, Baron Lobstein, who's the economic, who's the economic chief of the US, US Embassy here in Belgrade. Belgrade. And we and have, we have um, Alexander, Alexander Radovanovic, the head of the, head the regional, regional um, cooperation, cooperation center, center of the Serbian, of the Serbian Chamber, Chamber of, of Commerce. Commerce. And, uh, and uh, shortly, I will, I will um, give you give each, each the, chance the chance to have to a, a five-minute five uh, introduction. introduction. But I, but I um, since, we, since only we are only four, four panelists, panelists, I've taken the, the uh, opportunity, opportunity of saying a few words myself first. And And... There is, there no is no internationally, internationally recognized, recognized definition, definition of, of regional, regional cooperation. cooperation. So I have, so I have offered, offered to um, make, a, make little a little definition. definition. And I say, and it's, I say a it's a minimum of three, three neighboring states, states that cooperate, that cooperate in, any in any field of common, of common interests. interests. Examples, Examples are cultural exchanges and, and cooperation, cooperation, economic, economic cooperation, and, and security, security cooperation. cooperation. But the, but the list of, of potential, potential areas, areas is endless. endless. And then I and think, then I think key, key is that the successful, successful regional cooperation, cooperation makes, makes the situation, situation better, better for all, for the, all involved the involved than it, than it would otherwise, otherwise be. be. And, and there is, there is no, no matter, matter too, too small and no matter, and no matter too, too large. large. And I'll point, and I'll point at, at a, a um, historic, historic uh, example, example of a region, a region that, that used to used be the, to most, be the most violent in Europe. In Europe. Uh, there is uh, there only, is only one, one place in Europe, in Europe where the neighboring countries, countries have been at, at war, war with one another, another eight, eight times, times over the last, the last 400, 400 years. years. And that's, and my, that's region. my region. Um, Denmark, Denmark and Norway, Norway on one side, side against Sweden, Sweden on the other side. side. From, from year 1600, 1600 until 1814, 1814 fought, eight fought eight wars. wars. It, seems it seems a distant, uh, distant and forgotten, and forgotten past, past, but it but took, it took some, some hard work, hard work to, get to get out of that hamster, hamster wheel of, of history. history. 
and, and real, real regional, regional cooperation, cooperation did not start, start until, until after, after second, the, second, the, second the Second World War. World War. And, it was, and it was then very complicated, very complicated because, because Finland, Finland, as we know, as we know had gotten its independence, independence from, from Russia, Russia with, the with the breakup of Russia, of Russia, Russia and, the and the Soviet, Soviet Revolution, Revolution in 1917. 1917. Had been, had been involved, involved in, the in the bloody winter, bloody winter war with, the with the Soviet, Soviet Union, Union in 1939-40 and the, con and the con continuation, continuation war and ended, and ended up squarely, squarely on under Soviet, under Soviet influence. influence. Denmark, Denmark and Norway, Norway were part, part of the founding, founding members of NATO, of NATO and, and Sweden, Sweden was working, was working very, hard very hard to be neutral. neutral. And then you had, then you had Iceland floating, floating out in the middle, in the middle of the Atlantic, Atlantic. And, these and these five countries Gradually, were able, were able to, find to find fields, fields to, cooperate. to cooperate. Culture, Culture was very, was very central, central early, on. early on. As was, As was practical, practical solutions, solutions for improving, improving trade, trade and, the and the movement of people. people. Like, like a, a, an, agreement, an agreement, I think, from, from uh, 1957. Uh, uh, of, of travel, travel between, between the countries, the countries without, without passports, passports. Which, which led, led to, to a, a huge, huge upswing, upswing, not only, not in, only tourism, in tourism, but also, but also more, importantly, more importantly, in trade. In trade. Because, the, because barriers the barriers were removed, were removed and, it and it was much easier. easier. And, today, and today, even though even we though fought, we fought those, those eight wars, eight wars with, the with the Swedes, if I find, if I find myself, myself in trouble in a bar, I look for, I look the, nearest for the nearest Swede because, because I know that he will have my back. Have my back. There is trouble. Not that, not that, that in, a, in, a, in a current, in a current situation, situation, I don't I frequent, frequent the bars, the bars too, much. too much. And, and um, with that, with that um, I would like, I would to, like ask, to ask um, um, Tim Lannan to, um, to, um, to, um, to, um, to um, start, start with your, with your um, initial, initial um, um, five minutes. Five minutes. Tim, Tim. Okay, just finding the microphone button here. <clears throat> okay, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, uh, thanks for uh, inviting me on this panel uh, and uh, somewhat uh, appropriate for regional cooperation and uh, because this is uh, the COVID-19 does not just call for regional cooperation, it calls for uh, international cooperation at, the, at, at a very large uh, uh, state here. Um, NATO's uh, Euro, uh, as the acting head of the uh, Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response and Coordination Center, <clears throat> I have been at the forefront of COVID-19 response for uh, since the uh, beginning of February. And NATO's Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response and Coordination Center is NATO's principal civil emergency response mechanism in the Euro-Atlantic area. The center functions as a clearinghouse system for coordinating both requests and offers of assistance, mainly in the case of natural and man-made disasters on a 24-7 basis and such as the COVID-19 pandemic. In the context of COVID-19, uh, 18 requests for international assistance have been submitted to the uh, Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response and Coordination Center by allies, partners, and international organizations. And to date, 13 requests remain open. Uh, in the volume of requests is unprecedented. In the uh, EADR and the e EADRCC is the Euro Atlantic Disaster Response and Coordination Center, so I'll use that acronym from now on. In uh, the 22 history of the center, uh, uh, this is an unprecedented situation. And uh, to date, in response to all the requests we've received, 122 donations have been provided through the ADRCC. Although uh, Serbia has, uh, did not submit an official request for international assistance through the ADRCC, several allies and partners have provided Belgrade and the region with offers of support during the COVID-19 pandemic. Some concrete examples include uh, in April, the Turkish Ministry of Health provided medical supplies to help combat the outbreak in North Macedonia, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, and Kosovo. These supplies included masks, overalls, and test kits. Poland also dispatched nearly 70 tons of medical supplies to Albania, Bosnia, Herz and Herzegovina, 
Montenegro, North Macedonia, Kosovo, and Serbia on the last week of May. And this aid included more than one, uh, 10,000 liters of disinfectant and 100,000 face masks for each beneficiary. So with respect to lessons learned uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, though, we've uh, certainly learned that preparedness is key. Where high demand of similar medical equipment and supplies has strained the uh, strained industry and NATO and its partners, we're all competing for similar relief items. And in the context of uh, taking these lessons uh, forward, uh, and planning for a potential second wave, defense ministers have agreed on a new operations plan to support allies and partners uh, and a new stockpile of medical equipment and supplies, as well as a new trust fund, for uh, which is called the Pandemic Response Trust Fund. The Pandemic Response Trust Fund will support NATO's pandemic relief assistance to allies and partners. It'll do this by funding pandemic response activities that are desired by allies and partners but are not funded through a common budget. Having said that, regional cooperation has been strong when it comes to responding to crisis situations and tend to be less controversial than military cooperation in the region. The Euro-Atlantic Response and Coordination Center has always taken, taken on a leading role in disaster response and has an outstanding relationship with Serbia in this regard. As you might be aware, in 2018, the civil preparedness exercise, Serbia 2018, was jointly, uh, jointly organized by the EADRCC and the Ministry of Interior of Serbia. Around 2,000 personnel from uh, 40 countries and international organizations trained together in Serbia in a large-scale emergency response exercise based on earth an earthquake scenario. The exercise provided an opportunity to practice international cooperation and, and to enhance interoperability of teams from different nations to cooperate to save lives in international disaster response operations. The NATO Secretary General and the President of the Republic of Serbia inaugurated the exercise themselves. The scenario for the ADRCC exercise in 2018 allowed participants to participate in international cooperation and strengthen the ability of teams from different nations to work effectively together across a wide range of relief operations. These included urban search and rescue, uh, emergency medical teams, water rescue, as well as detection, protection, and decontamination teams. As Serbia 2018 was the largest exercise organized by NATO's Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response and Coordination Center and the first to be hosted by Serbia. And it also offered a platform to test new technologies and uh, promote the dialogue and practical cooperation between NATO member and partner nations. So regional cooperation is, uh, is on the forefront of uh, the uh, EADRCC's uh, mandate where we are working continuously with partners. We normally run an exercise on an annual basis and this year's exercise was to be hosted in North Macedonia which is now postponed until 2020. Uh, one. So uh, we will continue to do exercises and to help uh, 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 allies and partners to prepare for such uh, crisis. And uh, in the future, we will take a look at uh, introducing pandemic scenarios into uh, the exercise program. So to conclude, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to this panel and look forward to enhancing our cooperation with Serbia in the field of crisis management taking forward any lessons that we have uh, identified in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Tim. You, Tim. And, uh, and uh, now, now we'll turn, we'll turn to, to um, the next, the next uh, panelist. Uh, panelist. Um, and, um, and um, for those of you who have, you have questions, questions for him, for him he, has he has another engagement, engagement so he has so to leave half an hour early. early. So don't, so don't hold, hold back any questions, questions that you might have to, to, um, uh, to him. Uh, to him. That's, that's to, to the other panelists and, and to, to um, others. others. And with and that, with that Goran, we shouldn't lose any, any more time. Goran, Goran, Evo V. Egil, thank you very much for your love. It's true. 
ja ću morati da pošurim, ali se zbog toga izvinjam i vama. Ja bih već trebalo da li vam prije, ali bih vam prvo da li vam prijatelj Jelena za ovu invitaciju. Moli še ideje u Beogradu i među rađenima Srbije, što mi je jednostavno. Drugo, želim se zahvalim i NATO, da je nešto komunikacije koje sve sve pomaže održavanje na to u Beogradu godinama unazad i ovog puta posebno o Sadi NATO Week and this year, especially in the Netherlands, I proceed to Belgrade. Because this is one of those conferences that debates difficult topics with Serbia. I carefully listened to the previous panels and the one yesterday and this morning. But the last panel is dedicated to regional conversations. If you allow me, I would like to share with you information regarding the Western Balkan, including in the area of cooperation, including security, and yet these Open the cooperation are often neglected. Difficult issues always overshadow good results. Real results that you did, Alexander Dovanovich, will contribute to what I'm saying from the perspective of the Chamber of Commerce and regional investments for the region. Ali dopustite samo da kažem, kada je u pitanju o saradnju u oblasti bezbednosti, imate čitav niz inicijativa koje su ili delom ili potpuno pod Savetom za regionalno saradnju, osim imamo za dvojstvo da je Savet za regionalno saradnju od 2013. i 2018. I have the honor to be the head of this council in the six years that I was working there. Many things have been done in order to promote regional cooperation Program for Development in the United Nations have developed Southeast Europe small arms clearing house. The idea was to support the countries, bearing in mind that our countries were the producers of arms and weapons. The idea was to preserve this weapon stock and to prevent it from entering illegal markets. However, this is still happening. However, I have to thank the support coming from Spain, Germany, Britain, because they noted the need to collect and stockpile all the light weapons in order to prevent it from entering legal market. Council of Regional Cooperation has established a center for NSA, that is collaborating uh, with different uh, intelligence uh, agencies, uh, especially in the field of uh, industrial intelligence. Uh, monitoring licensing, especially in the area of military uh, production. Uh, all the trades between EU member states and uh, countries of the region in terms of uh, trading weapons monitoring closely. So, um, participants in this body were who are actually first of foremost in charge of intelligence services in the region, and they collect open source intelligence services. Uh, information and they on migration, on cyber, cyber security, migration, cyber security, on the dissemination of fake news and disinformation, uh, uh, all in the attempt to prevent hate speech, etc. So this was an important cooperation body, regional partnership for PCDF, so this was established iz naših prostora koji su učestvili u ratu u Siriji ili drugde i nastojanje da se spreče odliv i da se socijalizni poratnici. In the wars in Syria or in the Middle East, so the idea was to prevent the, them to return from these uh, war runs that uh, and initiated their activities here. 
uz punu podršku financijsku i svaku drugu logističku Evropske unije, Integrated Internal Security Governance, znači upravenje unutrašnjih bezbednosti na integralni način ima tri stuba, jedan je counter-terrorism, drugi je counter-terrorism, treći je border organized crime and border security. So these were three crucial topics and challenges for the region that were put under the umbrella of this initiative. In the several forthcoming years, there are probably going to be several other bodies that are going to take over these initiatives that are currently in the way of establishment. But these are all different forms of cooperation, all under the umbrella of the Council of Regional Cooperation. There are also two initiatives i drugo je Rakvija, pored Zagreba, uz veliku podršku Hrvatske vlade, a drugi uključujući NATO, saradnjivost i zemljenske vlade. Kosovo ne učestvuje Intelligence agencies, national intelligence agencies, because they are not considered a recognized state by all the countries. In all other bodies, there are equal uh, equal participants. Uh, so the fact that there are political differences do not necessarily mean that Kosovo does not participate in different cooperation bodies, uh, especially those concerning security. Council of Regional Cooperation has several years ago with the full support of the Minister of the Region and EU presented the multi-annual election for the regional economic area in the Western Balkans, attempting to open the Western Balkans territory, all the six economies of the Balkans, to remove all the obstacles for free trade. We do understand that there are problems in the functioning of SEFTA, that is, of course, the underpinning these processes, but everybody is attempting to overcome the problems with implementation of SEFTA. Mr. Radovanov should probably say more about experiences of the pandemic crisis of the Council for Regional Cooperation and SEFTA. Special Green Corridors Agreement have been signed, enabling cooperation lines Trans, uh, for transport across borders, uh, all the humanitarian assistance and medical uh, equipment in order for countries to help and assist one another during crisis times. Mini Schengen is building upon all these previous dimension processes, um, enabling um, uh, residence permits, work permits, the uh, one and the same, to make SEFTA fully operational and remove various frontiers and barriers. This is all a process that is ongoing and gathering all the countries of the region. I would like to thank all the governments uh, who supported this process, including the United States government. They place the focus on the economic cooperation. And as you know, the result of this dialogue was the special agreement uh, of uh, Airport in Pristina for air transport in Belgrade. So now we are, of course, expecting a lot from the continuation of the dialogue. Uh, and the support of the dialogue coming from both the United States and the EU. So I would just like to remind you all that there is excellent uh, cooperation already existing in the region. Uh, the economies of the Western Balkans, however, this does not mean that it gives our eyes to serious political problems that exist. And there are the consequences of uh, previous wars of the 90s. And it takes a lot of courage to speak about reconciliation and confrontation with the past, so I'm happy to see that uh, the fate of the missing persons is uh, once again the part of the political dialogue. Uh, we are all looking forward for this dialogue to end with a consensus and agreement, uh, eventually, hopefully not to this future.
Thank you, Thank Goran. You, Goran. We, um, we um, will now, we'll now um, turn, directly turn directly to, to um, Baron, Baron Lobstein from the, from the uh, US, Embassy. US Embassy. Baron, Baron the, floor the floor is yours. yours. And, and Goran, Goran, Goran turn, off, turn off your microphone. OK. Thank you very much, Egil. Um, and uh, thank you also to Yelena Milic and her team at the Center for Euro-Atlantic Studies for organizing this event. Uh, thank you, Egil, for leading the panel. Uh, before I start, I should say that I am hearing both languages. I'm not getting the English translation of uh, Goran's um, remarks, but um, I understand the gist. So uh, <laughs> it, I might need some help during the questions. Um, I recognize that as head of the economic section uh, at the U.S. Embassy, I'm not necessarily the most qualified person here to address the security-related aspects of regional cooperation, but I do have some points to share on regional economic cooperation. Uh, some points have been made by, uh, by Goran already, um, but I want to echo these because I would argue that they are directly relevant to national security and areas where my own country has focused a lot of its resources recently. First, I want to underline why this is a US priority. Uh, in short, Serbia's national strategic goal remains European integration, and we support that goal wholeheartedly. Uh, we want to help Serbia on its path to EU membership, and we view regional cooperation as a necessary step toward that goal. Beyond that, the U.S. partnership with Serbia complements our broader goals for the Western Balkans. These countries' integration into Western institutions is central to our work in the region. For us, this means EU membership for all, which is the goal of each of the uh, countries in the region. Uh, for that reason, the United States applauds renewed efforts at regional coordination and integration, including uh, the Mini Schengen Initiative and the Three Seas Initiative, uh, which I will mention more about later. Um, the work of Special Presidential Envoy Richard Grinnell uh, to promote commercial links between Serbia and Kosovo complement these regional efforts. Um, on the Mini Schengen Initiative, we encourage the region to embrace this idea and to negotiate and do what is necessary to implement it. Uh, creating stronger economic and political ties through this type of initiative will bolster other efforts toward European integration. Uh, and it's an opportunity for the countries of the region to take active steps together toward that goal. Uh, to promote that is the shorter term objective of increased regional cooperation uh, while at the same time making progress toward EU membership. We like the fact that the initiative is inclusive, that all the Western Balkan six are welcome at the table without precondition. That reinforces the shorter term objective of regional cooperation while promoting at the same time the ultimate goal of all the countries of the region joining together in a much broader community. Um, on the level of relations between Belgrade and Pristina, uh, Special Presidential Envoy Grinnell has visited the region and met with the leaders of Serbia and Kosovo on multiple occasions in the past several months to reach agreements in business and commerce. Uh, we look forward uh, to the resumption of flights between Belgrade and Pristina and progress on railway linkages and other projects. These deals are igniting momentum and hope. We hope that Ambassador Grinnell's energy and efforts will continue to bring progress toward normalization and ultimately remove a major obstacle uh, to Serbia's European integration. And again, we encourage Serbia 
to take action, to get things going, um, and not to simply wait for things to happen, but to do what it can to move forward toward the ultimate goal of EU membership and more fundamentally prosperity for all Serbians. Now, I want to say a brief word here about the Three C's initiative. Although Serbia is not part of that forum and it's not my direct area of expertise, but I think it's a great example of the kind of cooperation we want to promote. That initiative was established by 12 EU member countries in Central and Eastern Europe, and it aims to increase those countries' energy independence and resilience by supporting collective financing for new energy infrastructure projects to connect the region between the Adriatic, Baltic, and Black Seas. We strongly support it. Uh, we think it will play a key role in advancing U.S. strategic interests, as well as those of our allies and partners in the region, allowing us to support them in their pursuit of energy independence and national security. And as long as we're talking about lessons learned from COVID-19, um, I'd like to add one more example uh, to what Tim was talking about earlier and echo what Goran was just talking about. Um, the um, CEFTA implementation of the Green Lanes Initiative across the Balkans is another wonderful example of how the region can take collective steps on a smaller scale to solve a concrete problem. That is, how do the Balkan countries keep essential goods flowing to ensure that governments can respond to a national emergency when that emergency requires limiting movement across borders? And we hope to see the Western Balkan leaders decide to make the Green Lanes Initiative permanent, or at least certain aspects of it. Uh, if anyone has driven across this region as I have and seen kilometers of trucks waiting at the border for customs clearance, you understand that easing cross-border trade would be a wonderful way uh, to begin to improve regional cooperation and the lives of a lot of ordinary people. Um, so in closing, let me once again thank the center um, for their work to move Serbia closer to the strategic goal of European integration a uh, stronger, more united Europe is directly in the interest of both Serbia and the United States. And finally, as we continue the discussion, I would welcome everyone's thoughts on the question, what can the United States do uh, to better support these efforts? Thank you. Thank you, Thank um, you um, Baron. Baron. It's now it's time, now time for... for, um, for, for um, Alexander, Alexander Radovanovich. Radovanovich. However, However, he has, he has disappeared, disappeared from, from uh, my, uh, my um, uh, monitor, uh, monitor, and instead, and instead we, have we have His Excellency, Excellency Ambassador Plug. Um, and, and all of a sudden, of a sudden he, uh, he uh, reappeared. reappeared. So now, so now Alex Alexander, Alexander, before you, before you disappear again, again, the floor is the floor yours. Is yours. Uh, I'm from the Chamber of Commerce of Serbia. Thank you for the invitation and for wonderful moderation. And thank you to the colleagues who are participating at an important moment such as this one, important for the entire region when we're opening many questions, when we are restarting the relationship between Serbia and Kosovo. Of course, uh, thanks to the initiatives uh, led by uh, Ambassador Richard Grenell and the U.S. diplomacy and, of course, uh, the European partners. I will focus on regional cooperation in light of the coronavirus pandemic, which affected the all economies in the region regardless of the level of their development. The extraordinary circumstances once again accentuated the relations in the region and the need to overcome this situation by securing security for everyone. The private sector faced numerous challenges, such as financial um, challenges, uh, preserving uh, works, uh, jobs, uh, uh, and supply chain problems and others. So Goran said something about this, which is the flow of goods and people in the region. Um, everything, all resources and chambers of commerce across the region region 
Uh, all of them showed uh, high responsibility and readiness to help their members, that is, companies, to uh, overcome these crisis moments. There were numerous questions that were successfully resolved by employees at these chambers in mutual cooperation and cooperation with the institutions of governments in the region. I would just like to give a, an overview, an economic overview of the situation in the region and the impact of the pandemic on economic movements in the region. So the negative uh, effects of the pandemic on economic flows are such that we expect GDP to flow in the region by 1.5 up to uh, an enormous 9%. Firstly, uh, as far as Serbia is concerned, total uh, exchange of goods between Serbia and Western Balkans um, countries from January to May was 1.415 billion euros, and this is a 9%, almost, 9, almost 10 percent of a decline compared to the same period in 2019. Exports declined by 7.7 percent, and imports were significantly lower, which is 14.2 percent compared to the same period last year. The greatest uh, rise in imports was recorded in uh, tobacco and um, agricultural and pharmaceuticals. Well, uh, that is exports, and there was a, uh, uh, some other goods uh, declined. So Serbian GDP is expected to decline by 1.5 to 3 percent. As far as the Republic of Albania is concerned, uh, tourism is the most important there, and the crisis uh, hit this sector the most, which forms around 8.5% of GDP, while indirectly it contributes by 26.2%. Tourism uh, employs 93,000 people in Albania and in the, indirectly almost 300,000 people. The decline in tourism have led to a decline in agriculture, which uh, is some 18% of GDP. And 40% of Albanians live in rural uh, places and depend on agriculture. The number of tourists, uh, there are almost 5 million people every year in Albania, but in 2020, we expect uh, economic decline of around 5%. According to the analysis carried out by our colleagues for Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, transport, warehousing, logistics and services have the greatest, uh, the most affected in Bosnia, Herzegovina, which is why green corridors are important. Um, GDP is expected to decline by 4 to 5 percent there. Negative uh, impact on the economy is seen in, uh, in Montenegro, in services and tourism. So tourism and services and transport in account for 24 percent of uh, Montenegrin GDP. And according to their official data, the tur tourism sector has declined by 90 percent year on year. Uh, we expect Montenegro to have the greatest decline in GDP, which is a decline of 9%. When it comes to Kosovo, a small enterprises and microenterprises employing one to five employees suffered the most, which is where two or two, four percent uh, decline is expected due to the pandemic in North Macedonia. Um, all branches of the economy will suffer. Uh, tourism and services will fall the most than the forestry and the car industry. Uh, the World Bank estimates it, the decline to be four percent. Regional cooperation in this period uh, will be marked by the establishment of green corridors there's continuation of operations, even in these extraordinary uh, situation when it comes to the summit uh, Western Balkans. 
in uh, Croatia. We had an online summit and the reestablishment of uh, the exchange of goods uh, between Serbia and Kosovo, which is important for uh, people in Serbia and Kosovo. I also want to say how important these green corridors are, uh, which Goran announced. This is an example of positive cooperation during uh, extraordinary circumstances caused by the COVID pandemic. Um, the establishment of these corridors, which were established according to those that functioned in the European Union and that uh, enabled during these pandemic times for essential goods to transfer to, to cross borders inside regions. So this uh, system is enabled through the mutual electronic communication and exchange of data between customs and other border services as part of the CEFTA, and full implementation may be reached before, uh, uh, sooner than, than initially thought, by the introduction of a system that has been used for some time. As I have already said, the Zagreb Declaration is very important for the region. Uh, and it is, um, it was, uh, it happened in May, and it provided some very important conclusions, and one of the most important ones for the economy of the region as a whole, even after the pandemic, is the establishment of a fast and efficient uh, crossing, uh, cross borders with the European Union. We talked about this at the previous roundtable which was uh, which concerned the mini Schengen and we talked about the waiting times and the losses and we received the confirmation from the European Union that it is thinking about the economy of the Western Balkans which requires assistance also European solidarity was proved in practice by approving over 3.3 billion euros for the Western Balkans, which is intended for support in the fight against COVID-19 and recovery, we hope, mostly of the economy after the pandemic. Another thing that I would like to uh, say as lessons learned here is certainly the importance of the functioning of the supply chain and the preservation of uh, economic activities in the uh, emergency state and the freedom of movement, the necessity for countries to uh, act in a timely way. This is something that all countries, uh, we, all of them adopted measures in a timely way. The crisis planning and relief uh, with enhanced cooperation in terms of uh, regional cooperation. Globally, this crisis, despite the, besides the health and the economic crisis, this is also a crisis of management. It's also important for planning in terms of adequate uh, response uh, to the second wave that is expected this autumn. The lessons learned in the first uh, wave should be used for the second wave. There's also a need for implementing the uh, in the initiative for the joint uh, economic space, which is Mini Schengen. This needs to be uh, implemented to, the, to its uh, finalization. And finally, the cooperation between chambers of commerce in the forum of the Balkan Six. This is very important. Uh, this is a huge value added that uh, helped us come out of this crisis much more easily and more efficiently for our members. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready to take your questions. Thank you all Thank you for... All for uh, Good and, good and um, interesting, interesting um, interventions, interventions going, going in different, different directions, directions which, which is, is um, uh, very, much, very indicative much indicative of the subject, of the subject because, because it can be, can be so, many so many different things. things. Uh, uh, I will start I will with, um, with um, uh, Goran, where, where you left off, and, off, and I, um, I'll, I'll Point the question, point question to you, to but, you I but I would also uh, encourage, uh, encourage the rest of you to, um, to um, chip in. Chip in. Um, um, by what you, by say, what you say at the very end, end uh, Goran, Goran, it almost, it almost seemed, seemed that, you, that you 
said, well, said, well there is there actually, is actually so, much so much going on when it comes, when it comes to, regional to regional cooperation in the Western Balkans that we that are, we are under-presenting and maybe, and maybe giving, giving this region, this region a, a worse, worse reputation than what, than what it, it deserves in this area. In this area. Do I, do did, I, I understand did I understand you correctly, you correctly then? I dare to say that you are right. And you understood me very well. I tend to agree with this as, I mean, as at least a former politician, I understand the relevance and the importance of the communication. And of course, what you can hear on a daily basis is a cacophony, a quarrel, argumentation. Well, all I wanted to say, guys, this is a result of unresolved, outstanding issues. And I've done pointed out that the dialogue, which has been restarting, and I'm very happy about this. And I've called for integrated approach coming both from Brussels and Washington. And I, of course, hope that all parties in the process will act accordingly and being supportive. But then again, I just wanted to point out to what extent there is a lot happening, which is very positive. I wanted also to focus on the security cooperation because this is uh, rarely reported, rarely explained. And I'm sorry, perhaps this is a failure of myself as well, uh, because perhaps we could have said more in more detail on what is happening when it comes to security cooperation in the field among all economies. This is really what was my message, and I just wanted to say to make clear that we all understand how much has been done, and I'm grateful for the support coming not only by European Union through European Commission, because it's substantial, but also I mentioned, for instance, CIMIC, uh, the cooperation among military intelligence chiefs. It is always in, with an active participation of NATO, UCOM. So they are very actively participating in this format. They are also, the NATO is also actively engaged in SANSA, National Security Advisor Cooperation. So what I wanted to say, there is a lot happening, and this is all based on inclusive engagement of everyone in the region. And there, there is a plenty of good news to share, and I'm happy that Alexander Advanovich also pointed out when it comes to economic cooperation, this what was a result of Chamber Investment Forum, led in a way by uh, Marko Čadež, a head of Serbian Chamber of Commerce. He is a spiritus movens. He was the one bringing together his Kosovo partners and then everybody else around the table as they really cleared a lot and they voiced the business community attitude and they shared this attitude among politicians and among the broader public. I think this is all positive. This is all good. So I just wanted in my statement to share a kind of encouragement that even a very difficult issues can be finally agreed through a compromise. And this will only open up for more of an engagement in the critical areas. Uh, reconciliation is a critical one. Then uh, rule of law is a critical one. So there is a lot that we can do in the coming years. I think it was Yelena in one of her interventions today who was openly saying something that I tend to agree absolutely. And this is, please understand, the reason that there is no uh, sufficient uh, level of the reform processes when it comes to media freedom, rule of law, not only in Serbia, but in the region as well, is to great extent a result of unresolved political issues. The huge energy is been invested both in Pristina and in Belgrade, but then others from the region around these unresolved political issues. And I think that uh, the urgency would be my motto when it comes to engaging in solving this issue, so reaching a compromise in a dialogue. This will open up for a huge potential, and I think Serbia has a lot of potential to offer in all other areas when it comes to reform of the society but also sharing of these positive processes with the neighbors. And, um, and, um, I'd like, I'd to, like ask, to ask um, um, Baron, Baron uh, do you also, do you also see, see the situation, the situation similarly, similarly to Goran, to Goran that, that um, actually, actually 
the existing, the existing regional, regional cooperation being, being underrepresented, underrepresented one, one and two, and two there, is there is a great, a great potential, potential for a lot, for more, lot to more to happen. What does it, what look, does it like look like seen from, seen the, US from the US Embassy? Um, I completely agree um, with Mr. Baron, Mr. Baron, if, Baron, if, if uh, yes. Alexander, Alexander Radovanovich wants to chip in, chip in, in this debate, debate uh, allegedly yeah. there is an icon, an icon with the globus so that, that you can press, press and then, and then you will hear the English, English translation. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> if I can find that, I, I have not found it yet, but... Um, the three small the three small in, the in the upper right corner, right corner. push on that, push on that yeah. and uh, there's a fold down menu. menu. Uh, would that be the language interpretation button? Yes. yes. Okay, there we go. Pushing, Thank English, you. Don't. Thank you. Kuala Sima. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yes, I do agree. There is more going on than we are probably conscious of. This is a real problem for those of us who um, are new to the region. Uh, who have not worked here full time for decades. Um, and I think um, some of this cacophony, which I think is a good word for this, um, is the result of um, not just the, the multiple outstanding issues, but also um, insufficient coordination. And I'm, I'm speaking as a member of the United States government bureaucracy uh, where we have dozens of agencies uh, with dozens of working groups that, uh, that work on various issues, all trying to solve and address um, particular problems. A lot of these have overlapping mandates. Um, and what you need in order to resolve some of these to prevent overlapping uh, work uh, and duplication of efforts is coordination from, from above somehow. And I think this is, um, you know, while this is understandable at this stage when we've got, you know, several economies working in tandem and, and with fluctuating um, contacts and relationships, um, in the future, I think as if, if as we are hoping uh, the region joins the European Union, is fully integrated into the European community, um, they can take advantage of, of greater coordination that that will offer um, to, to try to resolve um, some of the cacophony. And, and you know, you mentioned um, the, the work of Marco Chavez and the um, PKS. Um, I... I have met frequently with PKS and um, have the greatest respect for what they're doing um, to promote um, cooperation, business, commercial cooperation uh, between Serbia and Kosovo and to try to move that forward. I think a lot of the advantage that the, the chamber has is that it, um, it sort of is in the driver's seat um, in Serbia in promoting commercial cooperation, um, which I think would not be the case if we had multiple competing um, chambers with different um, mandates. Um, this, this is not to sell short the American Chamber of Commerce, which I also am very close to, but um, the, um, I think it all comes down to coordination and, um, and, I, and I'm hoping for more of that in the future. And it's, it's a natural process that I think will play itself out as as integration moves forward. Thanks. Thanks. Tim, Tim or, or um, Alexander, Alexander, do you have, do you anything, have anything, um, anything to um, add, to on, add on, um, on, on that topic, that topic before, before we move, before we move to, the next. to the next? Uh, we'll then, uh, we'll take, then take one, one uh, question, question uh, before Goran uh, um, has, has to leave. And Yelena will also say a few say words, a few words before, um, before um, Goran leaves. And a question... And a question um, um, so we are now, so we are now facing, facing a crisis, crisis not, not only in the individual, individual countries, countries in, in, the, in, the in the region, we are facing, we are facing a, global a global crisis. crisis. How, can, How can 
this region, this region use COVID-19 COVID to take, to take regional, regional cooperation, cooperation to a new, to level. A new level. Is it, Is possible? it possible? And if, and so, if so, how can, how it, be can it be done? Who feels, Who feels like, like going first? Well, I, I might try to, to offer an answer. Uh, I will speak in Serbian. Thank you. Or trying to give us room to say something about this, of what we can learn from this crisis and what we can do. I mentioned them. I said maybe a bit few sentences more. Than. A part of the problem that we are in right now is concerns uh, something that all of us countries in the region and Pan-European in the pan-European uh, area, all of our relationship with the health system, so the scarce investments in recovery and construction of a stable health system, this is something that we have learned and I believe that every individual country and regionally also, there will be talks about the potentials that we have, what we can invest in, who can rely on whom in the region when it comes to public health, that is one less. Another pertains to the fact that this pandemic has shown that part of the problem is, in fact, in the high levels of pollution, which is why I hope that one of the things that we will have learned is that we need to invest a lot into clean air, renewable resources, to change the energy mix at every national level and at the regional level and should use this opportunity and I think that countries in the region have it and I think they don't use it sufficiently which is the fact that currently we do not have to pay for for the level of pollution here. That is a grace period that all of us here have, which is why we should step up uh, to the pan-European market and to try to market this, to cash this in and to use these funds to renew our energy potentials nationally and regionally by investing into renewable energy. Biomass is one. We, uh, water, solar energy, wind energy. We have this huge, I think, uh, opportunity of a lifetime. Exactly because we have the possibility of reaching this pan-European market. We have this, we should use these funds received by more developed countries which need to pay additional funds because of the levels of their pollution, we should use this to seriously consider, review our electric, electrical energy systems in all the countries in the region and to, in the following 20 years or so, change this sector entirely and in that way contribute to a healthier environment. This is something that I think would be the Western Balkans Green Deal right now as part of the larger, greater European Union project Project, which has been agreed uh, these days in this process whose part we are also. This has serious uh, political implications because it allows you to diversify and to have a completely different energy mix and also it allows uh, for a new workforce, a green workforce. And I think we have this opportunity, we need to support it. I expect that the Serbian government will come with this initiative before the end of the year and I would uh, support it, I would like for this to happen and I will wholeheartedly support it if we reach a serious investment cycle in, that would enable uh, diversification and green energy and use some of these bonds in the European market because we have this problem with geopolitical consequences and we need to be aware of everything and to enter this uh, in a serious way. Tim, um, um, you, uh, you mentioned, uh, mentioned in your introduction, introduction uh, the, experience the experience that you, that have, you have gained at the ERDC uh, in fighting, fighting COVID-19. COVID From your, From your perspective, perspective, what would, what be, would be your advice, advice to, to Serbia, Serbia and to the rest, and to the rest of, this of this region 
for lessons, for lessons to, be to be drawn for strengthening, strengthening regional, regional cooperation, cooperation as a result, as a result of, this of this crisis. Uh, thanks very much for the question. And uh, as this is a global pandemic, it requires a global uh, uh, togetherness uh, to to pick up some global solutions. So even when it uh, comes into regional spikes and surges, it, it, it ultimately is upon the region to come together and cooperate closely together to you know, share perhaps uh, best practices, um, uh, sharing the information. Um, our center itself acts as a clearinghouse. So uh, a, a, a stricken nation can come to us and request assistance and we publish our uh, this uh, request that would come to us out to um, 70 uh, different nations and it's nations, uh, ministries other than defense. So we're not dealing with ministries of defense ourselves. We're dealing with ministries of material, ministers of emergencies, um, uh, sometimes public safety. It, it depends on the nation. But uh, we do a lot of coordination um, on behalf of nations too. So we do a lot of uh, third party uh, work. But, uh, you know, when it comes to participating on uh, some of the exercises we do, we do have a, uh, you know, I, I echo the comments uh, uh, made by Gorn and Barron that uh, in response to the last question you were discussing, um, I think there is a lot of regional coordination that is ongoing, uh, particularly in the uh, uh, area of uh, disaster response and uh, all the uh, nations in the region are, uh, are stricken uh, you know, each year by floods or forest fires. And the region does pick up, put the tools together and work together to uh, come to solutions. This is why the uh, Serbia exercise in 2018 was a, uh, a, an, a, a watershed moment for the disaster response community in this region where everyone came together and worked on uh, uh, on a scenario that did cross borders. Um, and uh, we continue to work in the Balkans area our, ourselves uh, on a lot of uh, crisis. Uh, but uh, again, uh, we're disaster response, uh, which uh, doesn't always, um, uh, the humanitarian community does not look at political um, uh, political crisis or, or political inhibitors as, uh, as much as um, uh, other communities. So we do tend to work together because it, the importance of our, our work is uh, the immediate urgency of saving lives. So um, uh, I, I, in the context here, I, I think there is a lot of regional cooperation going on, uh, the, the uh, neighboring countries. Um, so I, I don't have much more to add on that, but uh, uh, um, even through your center, you know, so, so perhaps uh, some uh, best practices and uh, uh, um, sharing of uh, information, um, particularly with um, uh, spikes and surges and the tracing capacity is very helpful in, uh, in this situation. So I, uh, I'm sorry I don't have much more to offer, but uh, that's from our perspective at the, uh, in the uh, center here. Over. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I'm conscious, I'm conscious of, of um, the time, the time that, uh, that uh, Goran, you have um, mentioned that you have, that you have to leave, but before you um, would, be would be allowed to do so, to do so Ms. Millich Ms. Millich has, has uh, insisted, insisted that, that she, will, she be will be allowed to, to um, uh, address, address uh, all, of you, all of you, and especially, and especially um, um, you got it. As you know, this year's eighth major week, uh, it's entitled This Is Us. So our idea was to show many positive trends that you can in Serbia in deepening cooperation with NATO, strengthening and improving relations with the United States. That uh, seldom discussed uh, European integration. 
je bila u glavi još upravo od našeg zimošnjeg konferencije o meni Šengenu na kojoj su govorili gospodin Ržavanović i gospodin Svilanović dajući u sobeći kao šef i mogu te gašem kao Svilanović. Stalno razmišljala sam zaista koliko je o tom stepenu integracije i u svim različitim oblicima regionalne saradnje u kojoj je i RCC zaista nevjerovatno mnogo doprineo, ali i uz podršku Evropske unije i NATO i Sjednjih američnih država na svih ovih godina od kraja sukoba dešava, koliko uopšte o njoj znaju ljudi koji sada komentarišu šta bi se desilo kada bi izašli malo iz onih standardnih okvira i tražili lokalno vremenu sadašnje prilagođeno kompromisno rješenje odnosa između Broga i Prištine. Neke scenarije kada slušate Balkan bi bukno ponovo ure Baruta. Sa svojom poslažem da mi imamo velika otvorena politička pitanja, ali mi se čini da upravo stepen ove različite vrste integracije, činjenica da je većina zemalja dobrano ili u procesu evropskih integracija već su i zemlje članice NATO-a, gdje imamo dve velike emisije i K4L i EU Fora Bosni, govoru prilog u tome da je region u stvari mnogo bolje. I to mi je bilo jako značajno i da na ovom panelu pokažemo. Koliko ja znam, nas su samo prate, mi smo poslali pozive i adrese radovatnim agencijama u celom regionu koji se tiču i koji se bavi reagovanjem u vanrednim situacijama. Jako mi je milo što je gospodin Lanan danas sa nama. Ako pogledate ova istraživanja javnog mjenja koje smo juče zvanično predstavili, vidjet ćete da veći broj građana Srbije ima pozitivan odnos za saradnju Srbije sa NATO-om upravo u reagovanju u vanrednim situacijama i upravljenim krizama. Taj je procenak bio čak nešto veći prošle godine i verujem da je to zato što smo promovisali intenzivno u prvom vežu Srbije 2018. koju vi spominjete. Prisjetimo se samo da ovo sada pandemija je globalnog karaktera, ali većina prirodnih katastrofa i vanrednih situacija sa kojima se susrećamo je regionalnog karaktera. Srbije je primjela veliku pomoć od Evropske unije, pa onda posle od NATO i tokom poplava 2014. i 2016. godine i tokom izvrsenih krize, ali je velika pomoć primjela i Albanija posle razvojnog zemljotresa. I posle tog zemljotresa i donatorske konferencije EU, ono što je meni bilo vrlo milo da čujem jeste da su premijer Rama i Zoran Zajev i predsjednik Srbije tada najavili i jačanje saradnje u oblasti reagovanja u vanrednim situacijama. Jedna od stvari koja čini se manje zna jeste da Srbija još uvijek nije dala i pored sve veće pritiska diplomatski status na zvanom ruskom humanitarnom centru, što je više mislim da je vlada Srbije uradila jedan vrlo pametan potez i izašla na aerodromu Niša, uzela aerodrom od grada Niša od trenutka, dakle, kada je se ruski, takozvani srpsko-ruski humanitarni centar takođe premisli u svoje prostorije na aerodromske prostorije. Meni je, dakle, jako milo što vidim da postoji prostor da se sve uvukvatni odnosi Srbije sa NATO-om popravljaju i kroz promovisanje saradnje u reagovanju vanrednih situacijama. Čini mi se da je i tu i regionalni odmor koji bi opet mogao da ide i u koordinaciji sa NATO-om i EU mehanizmom prava stvar. Ne treba zaboraviti takođe da je posle deset godina uspešne saradnje partnerske sa nacionalnom gardom Ohaja Srbija u stvari proširila formu te saradnje upravo i na reagovanje u vanrednim situacijama. A ako postoji iskustvo koje smo naučili s COVID-a, to je da postoji sve manje razlike između vojne pokretljivosti i krizne pokretljivosti. Tu je se nama ambasador Holandske, koliko ja znam, i u pesku Holandije je bila ta koja je zadužena za vojnu pokretljivost i promovisanje tog koncepta. Jedan od velikih prijatelja Centra za vratnostke studije i ovog našeg godišnjeg događaja, bivši glavnog komadujuća američkih snaga u Evropi, general Hodži, sada sugeriše da se vide da sva iskustva vojne pokretljivosti imajući u vidu sve veći broj hibridnih prednji izazova sa kojima se suprostavljamo, suočamo može u stvari da se iskoristi u taj sada širi termin krizne pokretljivosti i u njemu je brzina doturanja i onih koji mogu da reaguju, dakle, 
i trupa i opreme i te kako zavisna od toga da li postoji saobraćajna infrastruktura, da li postoje protokoli za prelaz granica i robe i ljudi. Dakle, sve ono što predstavljaju upravo različiti aspekti regionalne saradnje. Mislim da je ova kriza upravo volila koliko su svi institucionalizovani oblici regionalne saradnje značajni kada nas pogode te promene. To sam samo htio da je to. Become extremely important when Thank we are you, all um, confronted. Thank you, Ilana. Ilana. And, um, and, um, I, believe I believe Goran, Goran now has, has, um, has, has uh, left, uh, us. left us. I would like, I would to, like to, um, to direct the next, 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 next question, question to, um, to um, Alexander. Alexander. And, uh, and, uh, I, will I will also direct, direct the same question, same question to you, Baron, Baron, so just to get, get ready. ready. Um, um, and that is, and that um, is um, Alexander, Alexander, in your, in your estimation, estimation, which is which the... Is the Area, area of regional, of regional cooperation, cooperation that has, that has the, the potential of bringing, bringing the, greatest the greatest profit, profit and, profit and profit being both in, in economic, economic sense, sense and in, and in, in, the, in the sense, sense of, of uh, bringing, uh, bringing welfare, welfare of different, of different types, types to, to the citizens, the citizens of, the of the region. Certainly, what is key in regional cooperation is that countries in the region cooperate through chambers of commerce and that they form this joint Western Balkans chamber and that they know the priorities and objectives. Priority for us in the Western Balkans is to enable quick, fast, efficient uh, border crossings to enable each other that we accept the documents that accompany these goods I'm talking about the accepting of the reports by accredited laboratories and the harmonization of um, FITO and sanitary certificates, uh, the integrated uh, control of borders and establishing joint control. Everything related to the facilitation and the greater efficiency of trade. Trade is the main opportunity for this region, which can be seen by the numbers, excepting this year and these 17 months prior, due to the taxes introduced in Pristina, but this uh, growing trend of trade in the region is uh, great and would have been greater and faster if uh, we removed borders, that is, facilitating border crossing. We would have more significant and uh, better destinations for investment. I'm talking primarily about uh, EU and US investments. What the region needs needs to do, first of all, is to resolve the issue of relations between Belgrade and Pristina, that is normalized relations. This is a challenge. This is something that, that has hindered this region. It has blocked it. Over these 17 months, we had a blocked SEFTA agreement and other agreements. We need to resolve this issue for the region to move forward. The role led by Ambassador uh, Richard Grenell with his initiative towards the normalization of these relations is key when it comes to the economy. I'm talking about the establishment of uh, aerial uh, links between Belgrade and Pristina, the establishment of uh, railway, uh, postal transport. We don't have a uh, post. Uh, post goes uh, post between uh, 
Belgrade da, da, and Pristina uh, goes uh, through Syria. So we need infrastructural uh, relations between Pristine, Belgrade and Pristina, that is Serbia and Kosovo. I'm talking about a uh, uh, highway of peace between uh, Pristina and uh, Niš. This is all uh, something that hinders and burdens the entire region, which is why the Serbian Chamber of Commerce it has, is uh, investing a lot of attention and energy in the resolution of these uh, questions. We want to create a supportive environment for in entrepreneurs and businessmen in Serbia and Kosovo. Thank you, Thank Alexander. You, Alexander. And, uh, Baron, Baron, where do you, where do you think, think there is the most profit, profit for, um, for, the for the citizens, citizens and for the... the um, and for and the, for the uh, bottom, lines bottom lines of, of um, both governments, both governments and, and uh, corporations. Well, Egil, first I will have to thank Alexander for stealing my talking points because that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, and, and as I said in my opening remarks, you know, I, I know this from personal experience even in the few months that I've lived in Serbia from driving through borders and seeing uh, the, the miles and miles of trucks piled up to cross, um, so much could be accomplished uh, by simply making border crossings more efficient and, and by easing trade. And, and that comes down to, as Alexander said, harmonizing documentation, harmonizing procedures and establishing um, well-functioning border crossings. And, and this, you know, it would facilitate trade, it would enable more trade, um, which would reduce the cost of trade um, and would reduce expenses of doing business um, around the region, which would be good for companies, it would be good for ordinary citizens. Um, and, and I think it would ultimately facilitate um, better relations among the governments of the region. Um, one of the things to return to um, the earlier topic of what did we learn from COVID-19, um, and as I also said in my opening remarks, um, the, the fact that um, COVID-19 um, the pandemic um, gave us the impetus, gave the region um, a reason to quickly resolve this issue of how do you get essential goods across borders. I think that demonstrated uh, how important it is um, to, to facilitate cross-border movement of goods and people um, because um, in normal times, it simply makes life easier for people uh, in a crisis, it can mean the difference between life and death. Um, when when that is when that hinges on having the right goods in the right place at the right time, um, and resolving these things quickly, um, also as Tim said in the beginning, uh, depends on preparedness. Um, this um, having the connections in place to facilitate uh, cooperation having exercises to practice cooperation, um, all of that goes to the ultimate goal of working together to solve problems. Um, and then finally, to return uh, to what Alexander just uh, mentioned, the, uh, the resumption of air transport links, rail transport links, and the peace highway uh, between uh, Belgrade and Pristina um, all of that is uh, specifically in the agenda that uh, Ambassador Grinnell has laid out, um, ways that we can get um, Serbia and Kosovo to communicate, to cooperate, and ultimately to facilitate a reconciliation, a normalization of relations um, to, to get the region closer to EU membership and to make life better for the people here. Um, and that's ultimately what we all want. So that's my answer. 
Thank you both. Thank you it's, both. It's, it's, it's quite interesting, quite interesting to, me, to me, coming, coming from, from the Nordic region, region that, that what you, what you both pointed, pointed at, at removing, removing obstacles, obstacles for the free, for the free passage, passage or borders, or borders or people or people and goods. And goods. That, was that was the kind of defining, kind of defining moment, moment of the success, the success, the success, the success of the Nordic, of the Nordic operation. operation. Some, some 63, 63 years, ago, years ago, when the, when the, uh, with, the with the introduction of, of travel, travel without, without passport, passport and, and some some simultaneously, simultaneously a system, a system where, where goods could, goods could cross, cross the, borders the borders freely freely because, because there was there a, was a common, common framework, framework of regulations, of regulations underpinning, underpinning, um, underpinning 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 um, the um, the um, the whole the whole, um, um, the whole, the whole uh, system. system and that and that's that's really, that's really how we how gained, we gained um, how we how gained, we gained the, the energy energy that we, that, we uh, that that um, is still is going, still going into our, into our operation, operation. Um, um, we have we have about ten minutes, 10 minutes left, left and, and um, I will I will um, each let each you let you have a few finishing words and I'll start with with Tim, with and, Tim I'll and I'll give you one, one um, hard, hard question. question. That is, that is if, the if the Western Balkans, Balkans uh, get hit, hit really hard, really hard this, winter this winter by a second, by a second wave, wave. We, are we are now seeing maybe the, maybe the, the, the second, second peak, peak of the first, of the first wave. wave. But if, but we, if get we get hit in this, hit region, in this region by a really, by a really hard, hard second, second wave, wave, how can, how your, can your center, center um, assist the region? And also, and also if, if, there if there are any um, finishing, finishing remarks, remarks that you have. Okay, thanks. And uh, there's probably a good uh, final question because uh, there are some uh, organizations and uh, nations that are less familiar with the role of the ADRCC. And uh, it, it's up to us to make sure um, all the partners and the allies are fully cognizant of what is available to them through the uh, Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response and Coordination Center. Uh, we are a, uh, a request-driven organization, so we don't go out uh, shopping for uh, business or disasters, but what we do is we stand ready to assist uh, nations, uh, partners, and uh, allies alike. Uh, we have uh, over, uh, well, we have 70 nations that can request assistance. Well, uh, all nations can as uh, request assistance through us, but we don't have to uh, uh, go through any decision-making process uh, for uh, the uh, 30 allies and uh, uh, 40 partners that we have associated with the organization. We do not need any decisions made. We can... Uh, uh, activate ourselves upon a request for assistance. So um, what we do and are the advantage, uh, one of the advantages of us is, uh, of our organization is that we have uh, an outreach to, uh, of course, NATO allies and partners that may be able to respond uh, to the request for assistance uh, uh, bilaterally. So at least the, uh, the requested nation or the stricken nation has that uh, knowledge that they have, um, they're reaching out to 70 nations when they submit a request through us. We're in the uh, Euro, uh, European Union's uh, Emergency Response Coordination Center. They're, uh, they're roughly uh, uh, reaching out to about 40 nations. Their advantage is that they have uh, funds that they can apply to uh, the response. Uh, where we uh, rely on the in-kind donations of uh, allies and partners to respond. The, um, for a second wave, uh, one of the things we have uh, and, and, and we're prepared for with uh, regards to partners, uh, one of the initiatives is the Pandemic Response Trust Fund. And one of the, uh, there's two initiatives. One is uh, specifically for the establishment of a stockpile uh, that would be available um, uh, to allies and uh, partners uh, based upon an, a, a council decision. But the uh, initiative B is uh, specifically a trust fund that is established for assistance to um, the, uh, the partners that are involved with us. 
So uh, we continue to um, uh, make folks aware of what is available through the ADRCC. Uh, and when we submit a request, when we push out a, a request for assistance that comes through us, uh, it reaches out to 450 email addresses uh, across the allies and partners. So we are uh, much uh, better, uh, although we rely still on uh, donations uh, and in-kind uh, assistance provided by allies, um, we stand ready to respond and we're in a much better position than we were in the February, March timeframe for preparedness for a second wave. And uh, thanks uh, again very much for uh, uh, inviting me to this panel. Over. Thank you for, Thank you for um, um, your, particip your particip participation, participation and for, and for your contribution. contribution. Um, I think I, I think just I just saw, saw um, Goran, Goran on the, on the um, screen. screen. Are you still, Are you with, still us? with us? Okay. Okay. Now he has now he has finally, finally left, left uh, um, the building. The building. Um, then uh, then uh, to, uh, to um, Alexander, Alexander. Um, um, and to and Baron. To Baron. I'll, give I'll give you the same, you the same um, closing, closing question, question and, and give your give closing, your closing remarks. remarks. I'll give you Two minutes, two each. minutes each. Um, um, a lot of, a lot um, of um, research, research into, into human, human uh, interaction, interaction has, 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 has concluded, concluded that, that in order, in order for, for business, business to, thrive, to thrive, trust, trust both, between, both between, individuals individuals between individuals and between countries, countries is, absolutely is absolutely essential. How can, How can we strengthen, strengthen trust? trust both between, Both between individuals, individuals and between, and between states, states in the region. In the region. Alexander, Alexander, Alexander yeah, first. first. Okay. 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 Pa poverenje se uspostavlja komunikacijom između partnera koji jedne druge poštuju i uvažavaju. Pre svega mislim na komunikaciju koju donosi ekonomija, odnosno biznis. Biznis ispred politike i biznis otvara put i olakšava put ka rešavanju and facilitates the resolution of many political issues. Of course, I ground myself in relations between Serbia and Kosovo, and I do believe that opening business doors is the best way to uh, enable trust. Uh, we should understand interests of one another, and respect one another, and this is the only way to build trust. Where there's people, there's a, a agreement. This is one of our proverbs. Baron, Baron we are, the floor, the floor is now, is now uh, yours. yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I love that you asked this question because um, when I was preparing to respond to the previous question, trust was uh, one of the words that I wrote down that was is absolutely essential uh, as, as an aspect of cooperation um, that I think would make, um, would make for a great profit, both for you know, business profits and um, and for and the, the national welfare um, and, and public welfare of people in the region. Um, how do you create trust? Um, I think um, Alexandra again hit it on the head. Uh, communication grounded in respect. Um, one of the things that I think is important to remember um, and, and this is coming from someone who grew up in the United States uh, during the final years of the Cold War. Um, we approached a, uh, an old enemy um, with new proposals um, and an understanding that we had a common interest um, 
in, in the 1980s that common interest was survival, the survival of our children. Um, and I think we can always look at resolving conflict um, through that lens. Um, we don't always have to trust one another, uh, but we have to be able to find a common interest. And, and I think Ambassador Grinnell is on the right track when he comes to Belgrade and visits Pristina and, um, and identifies the common interest as um, business success, um, the, 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 the prosperity of our peoples, um, because regardless of the political imperative to, to preserve the memory of old conflicts and, and to keep those political interests at the fore, there is an abiding personal interest of, of everyone in the region um, to feed themselves, to feed their families, to have good jobs, um, and, and to have the personal dignity that comes from being able to support themselves um, and, to, and to be prosperous and to just live normal lives. And that, I think, is ultimately what we have to aim for in, in generating trust. It's, it's identifying those common interests and working together even with small incremental steps uh, to communicate on the basis of those interests and to find ways that we can work together. And thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this. This has been a wonderful discussion. Thank you, thank all, you for, all for um, your, contributions your contributions to the panel. To the panel. Um, um, your, your different, different angles, angles of looking, of looking at, at regional cooperation, cooperation has, has really, really given, us given us something. Us something. Uh, uh, I, will I will start with, with an, example an example of, of trust, trust. Um, that can, that be, can something be something to aim to for. Aim for. Um, as you know, as you Norway, Norway is a NATO, NATO, NATO member. Our two our neighbors, neighbors to, the to the east, Sweden, Sweden, Sweden and Finland, are not. Finland are not. But we, but now, we have now have an arrangement, an arrangement where, where the Norwegian, the Norwegian Air, Force, Air Force, the Swedish, the Swedish Air, Force Air Force and the Finnish Air Force, Air Force Without, without any, any bureaucratic, bureaucratic um, arrangements. Can you say, if, say the, if, the, um, if the 330 fighter, fighter squadron in, in Budo in northern Norway, Norway decides uh, at 10 o'clock in, in the morning, morning today, today we, would like we would like to conduct, conduct an, an air interdiction, interdiction exercise, exercise over, over northern, northern Finland. Finland. They take, they take one, one phone, phone call to a desk, to a desk officer, officer in the joint, in the joint headquarters. headquarters. And that's resolved at major, major lieutenant colonel level. level. And at 10.30, 10 10 they can, they cross, can cross the border, the border in their, in their uh, F-16s F -16 or F-35s. And that's and crossing, that's crossing not, only not only a state border, state border but it's also, also crossing from, from NATO, NATO into, into a non-NATO non 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 country. country. And, and depending, depending on, the route, on the route, flying, flying over another, another non-NATO non country, country, so three countries, three countries, countries and, more. and more. And that's, and the, that's the, by building, by building trust, trust step, by step, step by step between, between governments, you get, you get to, to where, where these things, these things are, are not only not achievable, achievable, but, but the, natural the natural order, order of, things. of things. And I think, and I think that, as, that Gordon as Gordon said, said a lot of the lot things, of the things that, that are being done are being underrepresented. That does, that does not mean that there are not a lot of challenges, challenges left, left. But I also, but I also got, got the good sense, sense from, the from the panel that, that the low-hanging low hanging fruit, fruit that, that is out there needs, to, needs be to be plucked. So, so thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, we will uh, we have, will have a two-minute two recess, recess from here, from here before, before we start with the next uh, stage uh, of the conference, the conference which, will which will also be the final. Thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, welcome to the penultimate panel of the 8th Belgrade NATO week called uh, Imagining a Strategic Partnership between the US and 
the Slovenia. We will have the final concluding panel. And tonight with us is a friend of the Center for Euro Atlantic Studies, if I may say so, uh, Damon Wilson, Executive Vice President of the Atlantic Council of the United States. He participated in, on a, at a spring uh, NATO week that we organized uh, at the Norwegian residence, which was the contact point embassy at, the, at that time. Now it is the Netherlands embassy, and as you know, they helped us so much the, for us to organize this day to week. Tonight with me are John Capello from the Security Network, but John was also an envoy, um, air attaché uh, of, uh, at the U.S. Embassy and Mr. Nemanja Stanovic, uh, politicologist and historian. We are working here in inhumane conditions. We are trying to observe all the recommendations and requirements regarding the struggle of fight against the pandemic. One is not to use air conditioning, and it's really hot here. I said jokingly, now only for Damon, and if only maybe the last speaker was uh, the general secretary of uh, I will start with another joke regarding our, the title of our uh, panel, regarding the strategic partnership between the United States and Serbia. We have a joke with two uh, people in the town of Vishigrad talking with the bridge, with the famous bridge uh, described by Ivo Andrić, the award-winning uh, novelist. And the other, did you read the uh, uh, on, the trip on the river, uh, the other one said, well, why do you read it when I have, I cross it every day? So we have uh, many participants here. So Damon, thank you very much for being to take part. Tell me, do you need a short wrap-up of the key conclusions in the subject, or are you just able to uh, pop in? right now. So, Yelena, so, is, is that my cue to start since my Serbian is not up to snuff? Okay, bro, there is a globe that you can press and then you will see the, get the option for Serbian to Yes, yes. All, right. All right. Okay. All right, you're ready for me to begin, yes? yes. Of course. First of all, thank you so much, Elena. It is, uh, it's such a pleasure to, to join you. My only regret is that I am having to join you from Washington, not in person in Belgrade. So uh, we'll make up for that. Uh, but let me just say, first, uh, hats off. Thank you for all the work that you're doing. Thank you for the work of the Center for Your Atlantic Studies and your colleagues there. I'm delighted to be part of this eighth Belgrade. Uh, NATO, NATO week. week. And I want to thank, want to thank everybody, everybody who's been, been participating, who's been watching, who's in the audience. The audience. I, know I know some of these issues, issues are controversial, are controversial and it's really important that we have open conversations, conversations engage, engage uh, and learn from each other in this. this. And so, so I want to take, take this opportunity to you, Elena, offer to, to talk a little bit about what I've called imagining a U.S.-Serbia strategic partnership. And in some in respects, respects, that means reimagining the relationship between the United States uh, uh, and, uh, Serbia. and Serbia. Um, um, and, so and so I think I think the reason, the reason I'm really, I'm interested, really interested in this, this is, because is because one of the one last, last major strategic, strategic questions, questions looming across, across Europe, Europe, Europe is the place, place of the Western, Western Balkans, Balkans in, in Europe today. Europe today. We, know, we know that uh, uh, Serbia, Serbia, we know, we know all, all the region, region is part of Europe. Europe. It's part of a transatlantic community. community. And in some and respects, I'm convinced, convinced that in Serbia, Serbia U.S. US relationship, relationship is increasingly, increasingly the key to unlocking, unlocking that pathway, that pathway, vision. That vision. It's, a it's a key to, to providing, providing underpinnings, underpinnings for stability in the region, in the region that can, that can unlock, unlock, unlock the potential, potential of, its of its people. So I come, so I come to this with a little bit of humility, humility because, because as, as all, all of your viewers, viewers know, the United States is in the middle of a pandemic which has hit my country very, very hard. Politics, which are very, very polarized here. And a, and a, a racial, racial justice, justice movement, movement which, is, which is, is really gripping the country, country. 
But I also but I encourage you not to misread, misread what's happening, happening in the United States, States. not to not count the United States, States out. out. In many, in many respects, respects, this is the power, the power of our democracy, democracy where, people where people have a say over their future. Their future. We, we churn, churn, we argue, it's our process, process of self-correction. Self and, and I would dare argue that, that what you what may see, see emerge from this is a reinvention, a renewal at home in the United States, which will directly impact our capacity and desire for leadership abroad. I also, I also come to come this, this from the Atlantic Atlanta Council, Council, an institution, institution with a Balkans, Balkans Forward, forward initiative, initiative that is that prejudiced in that, that title. title forward. Forward. We, want we want to move forward, forward with our partners in the, in the region. region. And, our and our whole work focuses, focuses on, keeping on keeping the United States, States engaged, engaged because, we've because we've got, got a, lot a lot of issues, issues on our plate, on our plate if, you if you can imagine. imagine. Uh, uh, to, keep to keep the United States, States and the European Union working, working together cooperatively in the region, something we are not doing enough of right now. Uh, and, uh, and to really support, really support the process, process of, reform of reform and, and evolution, evolution and, development and, development and development in the region, region itself, itself, because that, that is the key, key uh, to its future. future. So, so let, let me lay out a couple of observations, observations and, and a couple of, of uh, suggestions before, before we, get we get into, into a conversation. conversation. Um, um, first, first observation is that, is that look, it's, it's really clear, clear to, me, to me, to many of my many colleagues, colleagues, the President Vucic, the Serbian government, that it's been making an effort um, um, to, develop, to develop, to work, to work with the United, United States, States, to develop, to develop that, that relationship. relationship. This is attracting positive, positive attention, attention in Washington. Washington. It's, clear it's clear that, clear that President, President Vujic has invested, has invested in, that in that effort. And I think and there I think are, are many people, people in Washington, Washington who recognize, recognize that, that, want to respond, respond to that. To that. Second, Second um, um, I, think, I think it's important, it's important that the audience know that, that, that um, um, and, I've, and I've followed some of your opinion data, but there are there friends, friends and partners, partners of Serbia in Serbia Washington, Washington, people that are people friends, that are friends and, partners and partners of the region, of the region that understand, understand Serbia's, Serbia's challenges, challenges, both domestically, domestic, regionally, regionally, economically, and nationally, nationally, and that genuinely, and genuinely want, want Serbia, Serbia to succeed. To succeed. And, and I think it's, I think really, it's really interesting, your own, your own data, data that I read through before, before this, this. Um, um, some of it's some not of surprising, surprising but, but I think I took note that 65% of Serbs favor stronger ties with the United States. And frankly, and frankly, only 18% was not, not in favor of stronger ties. ties. We've, got We've got a lot, a lot to work with, with, and we need, and we to, need to tap that latent, latent potential, potential in your in population, population to, support to support a new approach, a new strategy. strategy. I also think I also there's think been, a, been a growing, a growing realization, realization that, that you've, you've had an attitude, had an attitude from, from Russia, Russia um, about, about Serbia. Serbia. Where really, really there's, there's a knowledge, a knowledge that, 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 that they, 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 they know that the Kosovo, Kosovo issue, issue is, is, the, is, is a challenge, is a challenge closer, closer U.S. Serbia, Serbia ties, ties, U.S. EU ties. ties. And, I and I suspect that we see, see an effort and strategy, strategy from Moscow, Moscow doing, doing the maximum, the maximum to maintain the status, status quo. quo. Because the status, status quo undermines the ability of Serbia, Serbia to get into get serious negotiations, to advance those with China. We see, we see efforts, efforts to undermine, to undermine the, ability the ability of Serbia to, to have successful, successful negotiations. negotiations. We may we even be seeing hybrid warfare, warfare where I've read from some analysts there, there against, against the, government the government to, to discourage, discourage the likelihood of any, of any agreement. agreement. And I think and we I think need, to need to understand why. why. It's because, it's because a potential, potential agreement, agreement may unlock, unlock the potential, potential of Serbia's future. future. So I actually, so I actually think, think now, now, despite all these challenges, is a time to be bold. Is a time to take some risk. And to understand, to understand that, that Serbia's, Serbia's future, future is blocked, blocked without, without an agreement. agreement. That the, 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 the benefits, benefits of a U.S.-Serbia Serbia partnership, partnership can't be fully realized. realized. And to be honest, most of those prospects are even, are even worse, worse without, without an agreement. agreement. And so, so we've got, we've got what, I what I think is an opportunity, is an opportunity as we, as we think about how to recover how to coming out of, of a COVID, COVID pandemic, pandemic, how to come out of a really difficult year. And I think we need to have a vision of what's possible. And so I'd so like, I'd to, like lay to lay out to you that, that in the context, context of an eventual, eventual agreement, agreement between, between Belgrade and Pristina, that we should, that we should have, have on offer, offer a vision, a vision of, a of a Serbia and US, US strategic, strategic partnership, partnership that builds on the remarkable, remarkable historical historic foundations foundation that underpin, that underpin a very, very warm US-Serbia US relationship, relationship historically uh, from the beginning of the last century, century that is committed, that is committed to, to accelerating, accelerating reconciliation between our country, our, our people, people, but also, but also in, the in the region. And that this and could, this could take, take the form of a, of a strategic, strategic partnership, partnership that's really that's committed to deepening, deepening the relationship with both governments, governments and, and both, both peoples, peoples, building, building on this historic this foundation. foundation. That advances technical, technical cooperation, cooperation on both sides to address common areas, areas of common, common challenges, challenges from regional, regional security and stability, stability to good governance, to economic opportunity. 
that provides provides tangible tangible benefits benefits to both both people, people, especially especially finding finding opportunities opportunities for enhanced trade trade and investment, investment, and understanding the economic economic growth growth and cooperation are the surest way to greater 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 mutual understanding and reconciliation, and and that that is committed to supporting full inclusion inclusion and integration of Serbia into Europe Europe, into a transatlantic community as it desires. And that this could be bolstered with a commission led by leaders, perhaps the Vice President of the United States, that has these objectives, that is brought to life through real working groups, focused on governance and technical assistance, economic trade, energy, defense, security type issues, and people to people and cultural exchanges. And that brings in our private sector and civil society and very active components of this. And could be and backed, backed up, up by major, by major commitments, commitments from, from the overseas, overseas development, development finance, finance corporation, corporation, perhaps a billion dollar fund, fund, fund to support, support private, private investment, investment in the region, in the region and catalyze entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs growth, growth between, between our countries, but also, but also among the countries in the region. region. But, I think, but I think to get to, to, get this, to this type of ambitious, ambitious vision, vision, I think we, we I do want to offer some cautionary notes. Is that I think it's important that that. That we, that we not, not that, we that we stop sending, sending what I would what argue, argue and some of my some colleagues, colleagues invite each other each other's mixed signals, signals to friends, friends to Serbia's friends, friends, friends in, in Washington, Washington and Brussels, and Brussels. Uh, people, uh, people that want, want to be helpful, helpful in this relationship, relationship are sometimes, sometimes confused, confused by the political rhetoric, rhetoric um, confused, confused about the discussion about of its relationship, relationship with Moscow, Moscow. It's where the where future of the country is going to be. And I think. We all know we that all Russia is not, not Serbia's ally, ally, and that rhetoric, that rhetoric can be confusing. You can discourage confused, confused, confused politicians, politicians here, here, up on Congress, Congress discourage orders. And so, how, so do how, how do we avoid the temptations of short term politics or the inertia of past, past politics, politics? Understanding the cost of that rhetoric or outweighing, outweighing the benefits. benefits. Second, Second, I think, Second, I think it really, really needs to be on the premise of a commitment to reconciliation across the Atlantic, but in the region as well. And this means, this means really grappling, grappling with, with history, history and, and open, open, really open, open to reconciliation as a conversation among our peoples. Among our peoples. And a commitment, and a commitment to working work together, together to, bolster to bolster the institutions that are so important to ensure, to ensure that, all that all the Balkans, the Balkans but Serbia in particular, can claim its rightful right right place, place in the home, in the home of European, European democracies, democracies in the context, in the context of, of the secure and stable economy. economy. So you've so gone, gone on too long, but I wanted to just lay out this idea of can we look ahead to a more, to a more ambitious, ambitious vision, vision of a U.S. Of a US strategic, strategic partnership. partnership. And can we, can take, we some take some of the bold steps, steps to begin to imagine that today, today to help us achieve, achieve something that can be a future, future that could really, really unlock, unlock the potential, potential in the relationship, relationship and primarily, primarily unlock, unlock the potential, the potential for the people, people of Serbia? Uh, hvala ti, Demone. I izuzetno mi je milo što si rekao da i Srbija ima mnogo da izgubi, ako se mi prostavi novi sporozum odnosima sa Prištinom, ali takođe i da Priština malo što izgubi dosta. To je čini mi se deo koji mogu ređe čujemo posljednje vreme. Ja ću se pozovem, nisi bio pratio prevod, ja sam ispred čoveka dva vica, ali nema veze. Kao što znaš, obično se naši događaj nazivaju po kultnim američkim filmovima ili knjigama i naši izveštaj. Prepostavljamo su mnogi gledali seriju, ovo smo mi na Netflixu dok su bili u lockdownu. Jedna druga knjiga koju ja jako volim od Josepa Kellera nije Kvaka 22, nego nešto se dogodilo. I u njoj Josepa Kellera jednog momenta kaže, od uvek sam želao da imam žensko od 26 godina, ali jednog žensko od 26 godina koji sam ikad imao, bila moja vlastita žena. Zašto ovo kažem? Ja celog života sam želao da imamo i letnju beobritsku nato nedelju ili proleću, a ne samo u novembru, kad je najgore vreme u Srbiji, kad je najteže dovesti amerikance, u Beogradu organizujemo i kopala sam rukama i nogama da organizujemo proleću u NATO nedelju takođe da videla pote Beograda šta se desilo sada se ima nas pandemija i sad kažu mi pa dobro nije problem, sad je lakše zbog ljudi mogu vidom lakše da se uključe, dobit ćeš dobre govornike pa neko probajte i vide da obijete ovakve govornike kao što smo mi dobili I zaista sam presretna da je jedan od razloga zašto smo insistirali da imamo i ovu verziju NATO nedelje, jer čini mi se da zaista su vrlo složeni okolnosti, ne samo COVID, nego da dinamika pregovora sa Kosovom zaista otkriva različite intencije i politike različitih državnih i nedrživnih aktera 
u regionu. Nehotice čak i površne, rekla bi, mainstream liberalne medija koji između ostalog preteruju se načinu koji opisuju događaju u Sjedinjama i Sjedinjama. Ja sam uživala slušati dijelima na jednom podijelu sa grčkim zvaničnicima i sa Metom Palmerom početkom, negdje početku lockdowna, gdje vi shvatate da je politika ove administracije u celoj jugoističnoj Evrope, ne samo na Zapadnoj Balkanu, stvari vrlo dobra i da postiže rezultate. I meni bi bilo izuzetno žao da se zaista koja je vraza, da se baci deva sa vodom za krštenje. Dakle, mi smo čuli od par visokih američkih evropskih zvaničnih u poslednjih dva, tri meseca izjave u kome se kaže da je dialog pripada samo Evropskoj uniji, da se ne spominje partnerstvo sa Sjedinjama i Američkim državama, ako je pre bilo prečeg komunike ima, na primjer, što je za mene fascinantno. Također sam htjela da naglasim da smo čuli recimo u financial times od kada kažu za vreme COVID-a zato što je Evropska unija bila zbunjena, tu situaciju su iskoristila Amerikanci i Rusi da uđuju da artikulišu svoje prisustu u regionu. Ja nisam mogla da verujem stvarno šta slušam, da mi možemo da izjednačimo te iste dve stvari, da bi se smatrala da je jedina najkonstanta koja je dobra na Zapadnom Balkanu je bilo američko prisustvo i da je pomogla ne samo u spostavljanju mira, nego postavljanju procesa demokratizacije i ekonomskog oporavka i prvo zeliženju svih otvorenih političkih pitanja. Iskreno se nadam da će tako da bude i dalje. A da postoje interesi različiti i oni koji bi dominiraju kompromis koji bi zadržao i Srbiju i Prištinu na putu evropskih integracija i jače povezivanja sa političkim zajepadom, to je neopitno. I nije tu Rusija jedina. Neki prekladni malo arogantan odnos nekih evropskih partnera ili nekih uvog u Vašingtonu na žalost ovome dobu. Htjela bih s tobom da podelim još jednu zapravnutost. I would like to share another concern of mine. The closer the exclusion is, the bigger the stakes are. organizacije rasta za ne pandemijom i izborima, da mi vidimo i možemo lako u stvari da doživimo scenarije. Rađe bi da razmislimo o njima, da se ne desi, nego da se ne desi. They are losing the focus, and there are two things that concern me. Of course, you don't have to comment them, but bear them in mind. First thing, it's something we discussed today. Brussels has been reached the fact that NATO guarantees that Kosovo security forces are not able to enter North Kosovo without consent or pay for the agreements of the local community. This has been more or less respected. However, there is a high-level concern due to this unlawful transformation of Kosovo armed forces that KFOR did not support. If the state of emergency is introduced due to the rise of the number of infected, maybe this is going to be used as a justification for also to try to put their foot in the north of Kosovo. Now, I hope everyone is aware of this potential. Another issue that really concerns me, we had elections in Serbia and south of Serbia, Well, there is a potential danger that the two municipalities in the south of Serbia, there are places, there are attempts of ethnic engineering and in this area with little green men, where the local governments in Buenovic and Preševo should be turned into exclusively Albanian ethnic area, da rejektim, 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 da rejektim
kreiranom situacijom na terenu gde fakto tražili nove elemente u pregovorima. Opet kažem, i COVID, i izborne kampanje, i mnogi drugi se zove se kako se Evropska unija i Senja američke trenutne države se očavaju. Mi bude neku vrstu straha da i takvi scenari ne budu opticaju, a ne bi volila zato što smo na prethodnom panelu regionalnoj saradnji čuli koliko mnogo pozitivnih trendova u regionu postoji. Oko je samo taj još jedan posebni činjen se napor da se kompromis između Beograda i Prištine postane odlučio potencijal zapadnog Balkana. Po meni bi vam otičio i oni najprirodniji način i da se Srbije u Bosni i Hercegovini ohrabre, ako već sada tvrde da će da prate Beograd u svojim politikama, da ga i onda prate dalje u procesu integrisanog političkih zapada u slučaju neke vrste kompromise. To su neke moje strahe koji postoje i o koje bi vola da možda porazgovaramo večeras jer mi se čini da je u njima, kad god je teško da su srednje američke države, sada mogu i tu da odigraju tu ključnu ulogu, da to prepoznaju i da vidimo da zajednički napravimo planove kako da to predupredimo. Mi je zanimljivo da se predstavljaju da se predstavljaju da se Thank you for Thank sharing, you sharing those, those uh, thoughts, thoughts, Elena. Elena. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe just, just three quick points. points. The first, the first is on what you were first commenting on about the United States, States and the European, European Union. Union. I think we, I think know, we know that when the United States, States and the European Union, Union work, together, work together, we can achieve, we achieve a lot, lot in the region. region. I, think I think we know when we work, work at odds that the prospects of success go down. And right now, right I would now argue, argue that an era, era of great power competition, the rise of China, China the revanche of Russia, 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 that there's, so a, real there's a real priority to realign. To realign. Um, and we're a little, we're bit, a little misaligned bit misaligned at times. times. And I think, and that, I think that, doesn't that doesn't help. help. Uh, uh, it, doesn't it doesn't mean we do the exact same things. We have different roles. We can have different perspectives. That's fine. That's been a reality throughout our all diplomacy and throughout all of our diplomacy. But I think, but I, think um, uh, I kind of come with the, uh, the prejudice, prejudice that a, a, a more coordinated US-EU approach in support of, of the Balkans integrated in Europe and support of the belgrade pristina dialogue is key to its success. success. It's also, it's also um, um, I, think I think the Americans, Americans do have, do have a, a role to play because I think, I think um, as, um, part, as of part of the equation of what, what the future of the region, region looks, looks like, like, I think the American, American presence matters. matters. I, think I think the American, American uh, uh, economic and entrepreneurship incentives can be catalytic. Um, even, even as I recognize that the EU is a significant and much more significant player on that economic front. Um, and so it's a coordinated effort that's really required. Otherwise, it's hard for me to see how we, how we get to yes. Sometimes healthy competition is good to keep incentivizing action. Uh, but on the other hand, to close the deal, we need to be closer aligned. Second, um, uh, you know, I hear what you say about concerns about KSF and, and K4 and access in the North. But I would just I would say, say that, it's, that it's, it's, it is it dangerous, is dangerous to, premise to premise a policy, policy on K4 just being there forever. There forever. And, and that's just, just what it's going to be. And we've, and we've seen, seen uh, in President, President Trump, Trump, a president who's really been, been uncomfortable with the sense that that's, that's just how it is. We're going to have American troops in places for decades. For decades. And, it's and it's not, not just President Trump. Trump. It's been an instinct in our country to say, we've got really long-term security commitments. Many of them my strong support. But at the but same, at the same time, time, I think we have to be, have to be cognizant, cognizant that, that it's, not it's not the right, the right kind of strategy, strategy to say this can, this only, can only work, work if, 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 if K4, K4 is running, is running the, whole the whole show and, and, and that's just and that's how just things how are going to be. Gonna be. Because we just have to understand that we have citizens and taxpayers and supporters and even that's become a less significant commitment for the United States. Our presence there is still catalytic and important. And it underscores the importance of a political agreement that could, that still, could provide, still provide, I would, I would argue, argue, for contain, contain, continued American security, security presence, presence as a stabilizing, stabilizing force. force. Uh, uh, but, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't just, just assume the status, status quo. quo. We, we need to need actually change, change the game, game so that so we that can we actually can uh, address, address the address issues, issues of your concern, concern uh, in, terms uh, in terms of security in the North. north. And then the third, third point, point on, on elections, elections in Southern Serbia, Serbia Valley. Valley. I served, I served at NATO when we had a really treacherous time in the Pressure of Valley. And I think it's and just, think it's important. just important. We've got, We've got work, work to do, to do um, in all of our, our democracies, democracies 
to improve the election, the election process, process and how it, how it participates, participates and how we have representation, how we have representation of, of, of uh, political, political views, views and minorities, minorities um, you know, across, across the Balkans, Balkans including, including in Serbia. Serbia. We, need we need to see the opposition in the political arena. arena. We, need we need to see them competing in elections. elections. We need to see them represented in parliament. parliament. We, need we need to see ethnic minorities represented in uh, uh, even, even when it's a uh, majority, majority minority district in the inverse kind of way as we've, we've had, had to, to deal in our, our own way in the United, United States. States. Uh, the, details uh, the details of this are why we have places, places like the, the Venice Commission and the Council, the Council of Europe, of Europe. Um, because, because together, together we've set, we've set standards, standards, particularly in Europe, high standards, standards of how to get this right. right. Um, um, we know that we can do that and we've got some work to do to get there. Back to you, Elena. Thank you. I would like maybe to ask John and Emily now if they would like to pose questions to them and to use this great opportunity. Because I think that both of you can claim a percentage of share of the success that the Serbian public see the improvement in the US-Serbia relationship. And that actually the key sources for them for this improvement have been uh, mainstream media and Serbian leading politicians and rare NGOs. And uh, uh, John was working uh, as Damon was uh, reminding us of the great history you know, that we have had together. You were the one who was promoting the, the significance of Mission Heliad, you know, which was almost buried in our uh, memory in Serbia, at least, and Emmanuel, you too. I don't know if there are many more political commentators so frequently appearing in media promoting the significance of the uh, uh, renewed Serbian-US relationship uh, along with the good relationship with Russia and China. So use this great opportunity to talk to Damon. Just, Just one short, short question. First, First of all, Damon, it's uh, such a pleasure and honor to meet you again, at, le at least in this manner, and I do hope that we will see you again in Belgrade sometime soon. Just one brief and very specific question I've been waiting to, to, to make for uh, quite a while. Uh, I've seen some of your uh, Twitter posts uh, where you say that uh, you envisage a very important role of Greece in bringing Serbia closer to the Western community. So can you a uh, little bit uh, elaborate on that? And uh, do you envisage that uh, very important and specific role of Greece alone or as a part of this so-called Balkans Four, together with Romania, Bulgaria and Serbia? Thank you. Yes, thank yes, you thank for you that question. question. Thank you for the work you do as well. It's very it's valuable. valuable. Um, um, so for, so for, for, for far, far too long, long Greece was in a, 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 a spot where Greece, Greece was seen as the problem, and it had economic disasters at home, it had political turmoil, it had populist politics, question of whether it would stay in the European Union. And the whole concept of Greece as the, as the home of the vision of Thessaloniki, the vision of, a, of a Western Balkans that would one day be part of Europe, was really being buried. Um, and, Greece um, and Greece was the, was the object, object of EU work, work and, and uh, even American, American work. And, work. And, so and so as you've, you've seen, seen over the past, the past couple, of years, couple of years, the U.S.-Greek US relationship, Greek relationship is really dramatically, dramatically changed, changed and improved for the better. better. It's probably, it's probably at, its at its height, an apogee. It started, it started uh, 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 in the ground and the run-up run up to, to create, create a more, a more conducive, conducive environment, environment to support the press agreement. We were delighted and pleased to see the real political risk-taking that took and to clear some of the difficult underbrush. And it's, and been, it's sustained been sustained and, and deepened now under Prime, Prime Minister Mitsotaka, Mitsotaka someone, someone who was cautious, was cautious and concerned, and concerned skeptical, skeptical of something like PESPA, like Prespa, but, but very, very much, much wants to see Greece back, back on its feet, feet playing, playing its role. Its role. And, so and so for the United States, States and Greece, Greece, we want we Greece want to be Greece our, be our partner, partner in restoring, in restoring the, vision the vision of Thessaloniki and helping to really get a sense of movement forward in the Balkans. And that and Greece, Greece could, could in, particular, in particular, as it steps, as it steps back, back up uh, in, terms uh, in terms of its engagement, engagement its economic, economic role, role um, can, can it play, it play a, particular a particular role with the United States, States in, in helping to build, build a, a, deeper a deeper relationship, relationship of trust, trust and confidence and, and investment, investment uh, with, uh, with Serbia? Serbia. Uh, there's, uh, a there's a strong, strong uh, set of ties, ties there, there, cultural, cultural religious, religious, historic, and, and, and I think the leaders get on. And I think someone like Prime Minister Mitsotakis, who's remarkably remarkably respected, uh, in, uh, the in the United States, States uh, can, also can also help shape, shape American, American policy, policy of, of building, building a more cooperative relationship with Serbia and, and working with Serbia, with Serbia to midwife a more cooperative, cooperative relationship with the United States, States all in the name of advancing Serbia's European aspirations. So I see, so it, I see as it as an opportunity, opportunity for Greece, Greece which was a long time ago, the problem, problem that we were worried about, about to now, now assume, assume its role of helping to be part of problem solving and solution in the region.
David, David thanks. Uh, thanks for your time. time. It's good, it's good, to, good to see you. I'm, I'm sorry I missed you last time I was back in, uh, in D.C. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more that uh, a strategic relationship uh, should be based and, quite frankly, is based on strong historic connections between the United States and, and Serbia. Uh, and these are just not uh, empty words. These are based on these are based on strong historical connections. Whether it's as Yelena talked about uh, these connections during the first, the Second World War, or the First World War, or in between. Uh, unfortunately, too often we look through the prism of the 1990s, which I would argue is an aberration uh, with respect to the relations between our two countries. But I want to I want to focus on the optimism you shared a little at the, at the beginning. The um, the poll numbers that you mentioned struck me as well. 65% of those polled uh, wanting a stronger relationship with the United States. Uh, it's something that I see, uh, I, I see anecdotally uh, often throughout my travels throughout this country. Um, but I wonder if you could share with us your thought on how we, how we take advantage of that opportunity, because it is an opportunity. Uh, absolutely. From a perspective in Washington, what do, what do we do, when I say we, the West, the United States, the Atlantic Council, uh, to, to help shape attitudes and perceptions, to, to help shift those numbers? That's a great, That's a great question. question. And I don't and have, I have the, the, the clean answer. answer. I, mean, I mean, to be honest, things, things that, that like we're, like doing, we're doing, today, doing today, Elaine has been doing with this, with this uh, week in Belgrade, Belgrade is really important, important to, helping to helping to inform that debate. That debate. But I think but there I think are a couple of things. things. One, one We've got to we've recognize, got to acknowledge, acknowledge that. that. And, and so we, so see, we see this type of polling data, data. And there has and there to be has a to sense be a of receptivity, receptivity to that. To that. that that's, that's welcome, welcome that's, that's acknowledged, acknowledged uh, uh, that we that see we that as an important, important opportunity. opportunity. Second, Second, I think, I think to, leverage to leverage that, that uh, and a little, uh, bit, a little what bit what I was trying today, if that's the case, then how can we imagine something a little bit more than what we have now? And so and that's so why that's I was why trying to lay out a little bit of a vision, vision for what could what be the could promise of an opportunity of a different, uh, 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 of a, of a more uh, intense Serbia-U.S. Serbia, US US strategic, strategic partnership as there's progress in the region, in the region. Um, um, to, help to help show, show people, people that there, that there are, are benefits, benefits to be gained from acting on this. On this. Um, um, and I think and it I think takes a little bit of helping to establish the right kind of narrative in both countries as well. Um, um, that's why I was pleased, pleased with the data, data as we saw uh, in the polling, uh, polling data, data, because often, often that, that, that narrative has been a, a, pretty, a negative pretty negative narrative. narrative. And I think and it's, I think it's incumbent, incumbent to tell the truth and tell a bigger, broader, broader story, story and let people, let people come, come to their, their conclusion. conclusion. But I think, but I think the, the same, same here in the United, United States, States is also true. true. Um, it's um, why it's we why spend we a lot of time, time on Capitol Hill and working with congressional staff to help people see a broader perspective. Because most people are busy. Most people are focused on other Most people are focused on other issues. But I think but one, I of, think the one of the most meaningful, meaningful things, things we can do, we can do is, is a vision, a vision helps, helps because, because if you've if articulated a vision, vision it provides, provides a North Star or a sense of direction of what's possible. possible. But what really, really does, does help then is that you can put some meat on the bones and point to some, some pragmatic, tangible, tangible opportunities, opportunities and progress. And that's, and that's where, where I really think, think from uh, uh, the Development Finance Corporation, from private U.S. private investment, uh, showing, uh, showing some of the some benefits, benefits uh, on, on, on trade, trade and investment, investment on civil society, civil society uh, growth, uh, growth people, 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 exchanges, to be able to, be able to show the show benefits, benefits of this. Of this. And, frankly, and frankly, that's, that's been, been one of the one secret, secret successes, successes of, of NATO's, NATO's engagement, engagement with Serbia as well, really pragmatic, pragmatic focused engagement, engagement that's delivered that's real, real results. results. We, need we need partners, partners in, Serbia in Serbia that will tell that story more consistently and accurately to their audiences. But I think but we, I think have, we to have to do the same, same as well. well. And that's, and that's uh, a little bit of what we're trying to do and committed to do in our own small, small way at the Atlantic Atlanta Council. Council. If I may be a party breaker, since I've been optimistic for two days and overjoyed with the results that I saw, we mentioned them, among others, that the number of citizens supporting cooperation in disaster relief and crisis management with NATO exceeds the number of those who want membership of Serbia and NATO, and this is a trend that should be used. 
But it appears to me that this positive trend uh, regarding the United States, if we're being honest, is partly conditioned by the rhetoric of uh, the Serbian authorities, which is, among other things, trying to say that uh, they've reached more understanding with the current administration for their own arguments, I would say relatively strong arguments and modest expectations in terms of compromise between Belgrade and Pristina, which do not uh, display Belgrade as, the, as a complete loser. And um, I understand that if we have a silver lining in this entire COVID crisis, it is that many citizens in Serbia understood the importance of having a safe job, uh, income, savings, how important uh, economy and economic integration is. But I think that by itself is not enough. I think uh, that a kind of understanding of legitimate requests of, uh, that we need also dignity, I think. I think this is a very intense story to tell, and we need to strike this balance. I completely understand and respect what Damon is saying. Uh, this is not a message only conveyed by him, but also by General Holland Hodges. Help us help you. We can't help you if we know that your relations with Moscow and Beijing are improving from day to day. And if we are uh, refusing to fulfill some legitimate expectations of the representatives of the European Union, Union regarding the reform of rule of law or the condition of the media. I think we have a consensus here. These are areas where we need to improve significantly, but I think the question is how do we reach this? I think until we take Kosovo out of the equation, uh, without a new status, we will have no energy for anything else, which is a part of the reason, I think, why people in, people in Belgrade and civil society organizations are pointing to some problems, but they should understand and support a kind of compromise regarding Kosovo, because we have no consensus in Serbia about this. One of the interesting findings is, Damon, um, we conducted this research in the last week of the election campaign and in the week after the election campaign where the international community started intensifying the need for a dialogue with Kosovo. So President Vucic with his party, not with the coalition, this is what everyone is forgetting, he did not uh, go to the elections with a coalition. We still have uh, chances to have a... Uh, it's, it's, it's not true that we don't have an opposition. So. He won the majority. So if you look at the results, when it comes to Kosovo, even what is implicitly believed in Serbia, not directly, is that a compromise that Serbia would accept is for correction of borders to be one of the elements, but this is an uncomfortable, an uncomfortable solution if we want uh, KFOR to remain as part of Resolution 1244, so this support is at 29% right now. So I just wanted to say that it's not easy to deliver on Kosovo. I think that we, there may be a responsibility, the public is not being prepared all the time. But I think there are understandable arguments, and I think that uh, with just a bit of understanding uh, for this, uh, no one is asking fundamental support from the United States for everything, but only a bit of understanding gives us a lot. And let me just be a part of Berkeley again. Instead of spreading optimism, let me say that the open dialogue is a way of re-establishing strategic partnership with the United States. I'm confused by the fact uh, that some circles in Washington and Berlin and the Balkans uh, look at the economic advancement of Serbia as a new problem, and the strengthening of relations with the U.S. is a zero-sum game, even in relation to the Serbian-European integration or in relation to Pristina or to Sarajevo. 
is it not in Kosovo's and Bosnia and Herzegovina's and the entire region's interest and the European Union's interest for Serbia to have good relations with the, a strategic partner of the European Union, the United States? This is a no-brainer for me, but unfortunately, the relevant public that I follow is not uh, does not see the same thing. Did you notice these trends, Damon? Uh, uh, astute, astute observations, observations Jelena. Jelena. Um, first, um, first of all, of all I've, I've been, been um, um, you know, I've, I've, I've followed, followed uh, Serbia's, Serbia's politics, politics. And, and, you know, I've, you seen, know, I've seen that, that President, President Vucic seems, seems to have, to have the, the, the desire, the, desire, the, the courage, courage uh, to, uh, act, to act, recognizing, recognizing that it's that not easy. It's not easy in this there. But I think because he and perhaps others recognize that Really, this, really, is, this the is the only way, way to tap, tap Serbia's, Serbia's potential. potential. Um, um, you, know, you know, I understand, I understand the, power the power of dignity, the power of history. history. We've, got We've got to respect, respect people. people. But we can, but we also, can also not let ourselves, ourselves be trapped, trapped by, that by that history and be smug, smug with it. With We've, it. Got We've got to figure out how, how to uh, bring, bring people along with a sense of progress. And I think Serbian leadership has recognized both that conundrum, but also the opportunity. And I hear and the, I hear same, the same, same from our, our friends, friends in Kosovo, Kosovo who say that they're concerned, they're concerned that there hasn't been enough done to prepare the public, the public there, there either. either. And I think that's, I think a, that's serious a serious thing. thing. We've seen, We've seen uh, political, political negotiations, negotiations hit the, um, uh, uh, hit the shoals when, when there, there hasn't, hasn't been enough, enough to help prepare populations, populations for uh, uh, the type of reconciliation, the type of agreements that are going to be required. Um, last, last year, President Vucic gave a very impassioned and difficult speech, speech in front of Parliament, Parliament talking, talking about, it. about it. But normalizing, normalizing that kind of conversation, conversation with the Serbian, Serbian audience, and the same, the same with in Kosovo, Kosovo is going to be key, key to, 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 to ensuring the underpinnings, underpinnings of, of uh, support, uh, support for any, for any eventual, eventual agreement. agreement. And, finally, and finally, it is a, it trap, is a trap to be told, to be told that things are zero-sum games between EU and Washington. That's just not. That's just not the game we can play. And I think and even, I think even when, when we see a little bit of uh, uh, political uh, friction, friction between Brussels, Brussels and Washington, and Washington which, is which is to be expected, be expected. I think I it's, think it's important for the region, region to stay above that, that, to know that you're going to be working, working with, with across political, political spectrum in European, European countries, countries and the parliament, European parliament. European parliament. parliament. You're going to be working across, across the political spectrum in the United States. States. Part of our goal has been to keep American engagement and support for the region as a bipartisan thing. And thankfully, we've got bipartisan support for it. But, but we need to we avoid, need to avoid that, that trap of, of thinking, thinking that, that you, you get too, get close, too to close to one, it's a problem, problem with the other. The other. No, no, the stakes, the stakes are, too are too high. I mean, raise, raise, everybody, everybody needs to raise their sights a little bit. bit. We, have we have a major, major struggle, struggle coming, coming on, on this planet, planet and, and it's how we deal with the rise of China, how we deal with the growth of authoritarian autocracies. And it's going to be real pressure on the free world. And I think Serbia, Kosovo, others will want to find themselves squarely on the side of the free world. But it means that we've got to clean up some of this unfinished business in Europe, Europe and get to and that, get to and that, that requires, requires the U.S. and EU being on the same page. page. Ako mogu da postavim još jedno pitanje, ovaj put ću na srpskom jeziku. Dobre, bilo sam da vi ste bili jedan od autora izveštaja Atlantskog savjeta pod nazivom Balkan napred pre više od dve godine i tada je čini mi se prvi put upotrebljen taj izraz o istorijskom pomirenju između Sjedinih američkih država i Srbije. Neki od preporuka koje ste vi tada dali u izveštaju su se zapravo zaista i desili i ostvarili. Vidimo jasan napredak u odnosima između Vašingtona i Beogradu ograda u posljednje dve do tri godine. Mnogi od nas su očekivali više, ali i to što je postignuto se nijekom slučaju ne sme zanemariti. Ono što želim da vas pita, kako je vaše mišljenje? Da li bi ovaj zamac u napređenju odnosa cijenih američkih država i Srbije, koji definitivno postoji, da li bi on mogao biti zaustavljen ili ne daj Bože preokrenut u slučaju očekivanog ishoda na američkim predsjedničkim izborima u novim državima? Um, the election uh, outcome in the United States uh, turns against us, so to speak. Thank you Thank for you that for question. That I think, I, think um, um, I mean, we've, we've noticed, noticed the impetus, the impetus of, of, of improved, improved relations, relations between, between Serbia, Serbia and the United, United States. States. We want to we credit, credit uh, outreach, uh, outreach from, from President Vucic in, in Belgrade to that, to that end, end. Um, um, and a receptiveness, and receptiveness uh, in, Washington in Washington to that. To that. Um, I, I, I think, think there, there are, are there certainly are differences, are differences uh, between the administration, the administration and what we're hearing from the Biden, Biden campaign, campaign 
Uh, we've, had uh, we've had good conversations, had good conversations uh, uh, with, with, with both, both parties, parties and their perspective, their perspective on, this. on this. And I think, and there, I think are there are some differences there. there. Um, there, are there are some nuances, nuances that, are that are significant. But I think, but I think everybody, everybody understands, understands the fundamental, the fundamental story, story of, of uh, a Kosovo, uh, a Serbia uh, dialogue, dialogue that, that leads, leads to progress, progress an outcome, outcome, a comprehensive agreement, agreement reconciliation, reconciliation, can really can change, change the equation and allow for... Uh, closing, closing this chapter, this chapter and, uh, and moving, and moving on, on to a new to chapter, chapter uh, where we understand, we understand we've got, got to finish the, 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 work, the work of a Europe of Europe free. We've, we've got to got finish, finish uh, ensuring, uh, ensuring that the, the, the Western, Western Balkans, Balkans has, a has a future inside, inside this, this community, community uh, because, uh, because, the because the stakes on other issues, issues are higher. higher. And I think you're going to see a lot of expertise and support for the dialogue, for closer relations and engagement in the region. Uh, whether, uh, whether it's a re-elected re Trump administration, administration or whether, or whether it's, it's a Biden administration, administration. There, are there are actors on both sides of the equation that, that, that differ, differ, that have, that have differ, differ in different politics, politics here, here, but are, but are quite, quite committed, committed to the region. To the region. And, and uh, uh, some, some have different, have different perspectives, perspectives, but I think, but I think you'll, you'll see pretty, pretty intensive, intensive engagement, engagement in either scenario, scenario because in many respects, we see this as a historic opportunity as Americans. To, 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 to do, do something, something to help, to help uh, close, close one, one chapter, chapter and open another. another. And I think and that's, I think that's going, going to be an attractive, an attractive option, option, whether, whether it, is, it is, uh, the is the current administration, administration or Biden administration. Or Biden administration. Know how long Damon can stay with us, this is why I would uh, give an opportunity to the fellow that was with us, Radu Sokas and Emine Starovic, to give us briefly the uh, conclusions on the grounds of yesterday and today's discussions, and then I'm going to ask Damon if his final conclusions and uh, recommendations, and you, you wouldn't believe, but I actually don't have much to say. Uh, Serbia should deepen the relations with NATO, and uh, which is uh, very complementary with its strategic objective, we have to have a vision uh, before us, we have to be ready to difficult compromises, and and let me add by saying that they also act as outside uh, EU and United some of them are in this region who really do not want to see uh, the finally binding uh, agreement between Europe and Pristina that would lead both countries towards, uh, uh, towards membership in the EU and uh, the further anchoring in the political West. So this is something that is uh, of concern to all of us. Okay. But I'm inviting you John. Do, do you have any recommendations? No. Uh, Okay. It's been a, it was a great day, a long day. We covered a lot of ground. I think, Damon, your, your optimistic uh, comments, I'm, I'm going to be less of a party breaker. I think that that's a good optimistic way to, uh, to, uh, to end this. There's, there's opportunity. We need to identify that opportunity, and I, and I think act. Um, things take time, but too much time has gone by. And it's, uh, it's, it's time to uh, re-energize, uh, refocus on this important part of the world, this important part of Europe. So thanks, Tim. Uh, the discussion today uh, was focused on the need to respond to the question as to whether Serbia should become a member of NATO and whether this is going to happen anytime soon. I don't have the response to this question, however, what I would like to say is that we actually do need uh, quality, well-informed debate, that we do not have it, unfortunately, and the findings of our public opinion survey uh, support this. There's a huge discrepancy in our findings where 9 or 10 percent of the citizens are in support of membership in NATO, yet on the other hand, 51 percent support membership in the EU, and 69 percent are in support of improving relations between Serbia and the United States. But this, these figures show that something, this ongoing debate is going wrong. However, uh, preconditions for improving this debate 
that this is absolute precondition, absolute necessity, uh, and everyone who is attempting to obstruct uh, reaching compromise solution between Belgrade and Pristina, regardless coming from Belgrade or left liberal or uh, right political orientation, and whichever country is uh, really causing a grave uh, deal of problems in this region. Conclusions, recommendations. I, I think I you were think passing, you were passing back, back to me there to, there to, to, to offer, offer a final, final word. word. So, so what, I would, what I would just say in closing is, 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 is first, first of all, of thank, all you thank you for all the work that everyone there is doing. Is doing. Um, because, um, because the, the, the truth, truth is, is, is that people, people matter, matter here. here. Things, Things just, just tectonic, tectonic plates, plates just don't, don't move, move by themselves. By themselves. Leadership, Leadership matters, matters, courage, courage matters, matters, and the actions of just a small and set, set of individuals, individuals can really, can really help, help shape and make a, make a difference. difference. And so, and so I, think I think that's, that's what, what we as a community want to try to do, to imagine a different future for Serbia, a more democratic, prosperous Serbia that is anchored in Europe, that has, that a, has a strategic, strategic partnership, partnership with, with the United States. States. I, don't I don't think the think issue of jumping to NATO membership is even all that relevant, relevant for this, for this conversation. conversation. Um, but, I but I also would, would encourage, encourage folks, folks, there's a, there's a tendency, tendency when, when I, I travel around the Balkans, Balkans to see the world as the Balkans. Balkans. And it is and important, important that, that you have perspective, have perspective that, that the danger, the danger of, for, for us in, in the Atlanta Council of the United States is that the world is big, complex, changing rapidly. And that, that I feel a little feel bit of urgency, urgency to help help uh, finalize, uh, help, help wrap, wrap some of this unfinished business, business on the mar uh, on the uh, uh, margin, margin of Europe, Europe, if you will, because, because a, bigger a bigger game, game is unfolding. unfolding. Bigger, things bigger things are happening, happening globally. globally. And, and I, fear I fear that at some, that point, some point the region, the region could, could be left, left to itself. itself. And as and you as watch. You watch it's future, it's future migrate, migrate, the young, young promising, promising future, future of, of people, that people that live in the region move to other, to other countries. countries. That's not, it's not great. great. Um, and, um, and so I think, so I think I'll, just I'll just remind that these, that these things are not inevitable. Are inevitable. The, United the United States played a role in helping to shape the system, system, a rules-based international, international order, order, set of norms, norms institutions, institutions, principles. principles. They had a huge yeah, impact. impact. It sounds it abstract. abstract. For Americans, our, our GDP increased eight times. For the world, we've seen uh, extreme, extreme poverty, poverty from 66% 66 to under 10%. 10%. Um, um, for those who lived on this planet, planet before, uh, before, before this, this, this era, era. Um, um, dying in war was, was a common, common cause. cause. Um, um, 1% of the population, of the population on, on an annual, annual basis, basis, that's down to 1-100. So things, things are not are good. good. Uh, they're, uh, not they're not great. great. But I also but think, I also think that, that this is this is a time to remember the, the, the opportunity, opportunity we have to shape, shape a much better, better future. future. It's going to take, going to take working, working together, together to, get to get there, there thinking, thinking big, big, taking some risks, risk, being brave, and ultimately, and ultimately remembering, remembering that this isn't, this isn't just about an alignment, alignment of interests. Interest, 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 interest matter, matter, but it's about it's alignment, alignment of interest, interest with values. values. And I'm proud that that's, that's not always been a perfect match in American strategy, but it's when America is at its best of the alignment between values and its interests. And I hope that uh, Serbia, Serbia can be, be can be part, part of that equation with, with a, a Balkans that is fully integrated in Europe, Europe, part of our transatlantic community. So thank so you thank for you your time today. Time today. Pleasure, Pleasure being here. being with you. Before concluding uh, the 8th Belgrade NATO Week, the hybrid edition, uh, very, I want to thank uh, AVE Media. This was the, our first hybrid conference. Uh, for the first time, I think, realized something like this in Serbia with Zoom and YouTube and live guests in addition to the pandemic. Uh, besides all the measures that we had, thank the interpreters and the entire Center for your Atlantic Studies team and to all participants who took place here live and through Zoom. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you very much.